This is a HeadGum Podcast. Mitch, you know, I used to love eating cereal as a kid. Watching cartoons on TV, a big bowl of cereal. What was better than that every Saturday morning? Mommy, Daddy, I want my cereal. Where this is morning. my cereal, Mommy? Daddy, where's my cereal? I must watch my cartoons on the telly. Let me watch my little cartoons, Mommy and Daddy. And I'd sit right at the foot of their bedwags with a big bowl of sugary cereal. If you poured me a bowl of that stuff now, I'd be outraged. Yeah, I'd be you like a hummingbird. I can't do that. You can't eat that stuff anymore. I can't anymore. eat that anymore. Look, but I still love watching cartoons. Me too. And, and I still love eating cereal. And I still love sitting on the end of mom and dad's bed. And Magic Spoon has replicated your favorite childhood cereals to taste good, but each serving contains zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five net grams of carbs per serving. That's right, Wags. We got Magic Spoon now. That's right. We sure do. A little note for you, Wags. The honey nut flavor contains one gram of sugar. Plus, it's a keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free way to relive those moments watching your favorite cartoons. Plus, it's only 140 calories a serving. Wow. It's like there's magic in every spoonful. Wags, with over eight unique flavors, you won't get bored of feeling good with Magic Spoon. My favorite flavors are Honey Nut. That's right. Wow. Give me that Honey Nut. You're a nut for Honey Nut. I like the blueberry muffin, but they also have flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, and maple waffle. And guess what, Wags? Birthday cake is back. That's right. One of your favorite flavors. Wow. The super popular previously limited edition only flavor is back to stay. We're celebrating our birthdays early with this fan favorite. Magic Spoon has great texture, surprisingly good flavor. You know, I'd like to have it as a little uh, little late night snack, late in the day snack. And guess what, Wags? It's delivered right to your door. That's a great thing about it. Comes right right. to your door. You put it on the shelf. You put it in your belly. You're good to go. Head to magicspoon.com slash doughboys to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try the magic for yourself. And be sure to use our promo code doughboys at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked, Wags. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash doughboys and use the code doughboys to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Hey, buddy, it's Weiger. So this is normally where I would have a flowery pseudo-intellectual, overwritten, scripted intro about this week's chain restaurant. But something happened this week that you might have heard about. The WGA, the Writers Guild of America, my union, went on strike. Now, Doughboys is not covered by the WGA, but it felt like it was in line with the spirit of the struggle of this particular work stoppage for me to shut down the pipeline. And so I'm not writing any intros. Not this week or not any week. For as long as this strike continues, and it will continue as long as it needs to until the studios meet our demands. I'm not going to get into the weeds of this particular contract negotiation because it's pretty simple. Fundamentally, these companies, the studios, the largest media companies in the world, some cases, these are the largest companies in the world, are bigger, more powerful and more profitable than ever. And our pay is down. Corporate profits up, workers pay down. That's it. That's the whole thing. We've seen this across industries. It's another attempt to gut the middle class, and that's why we're having this strike. Since this is a podcast about chain restaurants, I want to take a moment to express solidarity with fast food workers who have unionized. Just about the most encouraging thing that we've seen in the American labor movement in recent years Uh, Workers at Starbucks and Chipotle and local chains like Burgerville who have organized, who have gone union. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for your service. And your struggle is our struggle. Anyway, if you want to know more about what's going on here, check out WGAContract2023.org. That's WGAContract2023.org. Anyway, speaking of the rich getting richer and American capitalism descending into self-parody. This week on Doughboys, Erewhon. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, 
Paul Waffle Hauser, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. God damn it. <laughs> you did this intentionally. I did not. I did not pick out the roast. John A. sent that in. Roastspoonman at gmail.com. Welcome to Doughboys. You did this when you started, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah. I look, I got some instruction in terms of projecting and it was like, try to you're like you're talking to someone, but also like I'm my target is in front of me, not above or below me. So like I was kind of doing that gesture, but then I forgot I was on camera. Paul, a very nice man. Met him a few times. Uh, Great guy. Uh, Just got cast in a movie about Quincy. That's right. uh, That I auditioned for a couple times. Yeah. uh, About Quincy. So, you know, that I that I that that makes me sad and then you pulled the roast (laughs) well the roast is the roast is referencing that specifically yeah i know but it's just that's what i thought of immediately wags i'm gonna start the way i was gonna start careful you're gonna rattle the mic that's what happens you get riled up and what talked about this take your arm off of the microphone i'm fucking riled up what do you want to say it's gonna mess up the audio what's the deal with grogu huh when's that guy gonna say a fucking line huh I'm here watching The Mandalorian each week. I'm like, when's it? Whoa. Ah! We just got a loud, what that was. a loud buzzing in the studio. Fucking can't make fun of Grogu around oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> you're watching Mandalorian, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, every other character's saying lines. What's mm-hmm. Grogu's deal? He's just going to be mute the whole series? We're in season three. Oh. Uh. Speak up, weirdo. That's Yoda. <laughs> First words you must say. <laughs> Canonically, I am like this too. So when he was a baby, Yoda didn't fucking say shit. Yeah, I think they've got a very long lifespan, which means that they're, you know, kind of a early phase of life is extended too. That's the whole, that's what we can infer. Oh, he should fucking talk. He should yeah. say something. Are you still watching Mandalorian? I'm watching it, yeah. Man, you really got me with your roast. And I know it wasn't your intention, but it really got me. I also did. I don't pick it out. I don't pick out the roast. Just like you don't pick out the drops. Mm. That's part of the That's part of the whole thing we do. It's like, hey, here's this thing I'm seeing, and then I can say it to you, and then we can both react to it. I think there's a role that like takes place in your hometown. You should get it automatically, don't you think? You, it should, there should be some sort of thing where you get it. So you're saying if they were like, hey, we're doing a movie about Lakewood, California, Mm -hmm. then if I want the role, I should just get the role. I think so. I just don't think that's sustainable. Yeah. (laughs) I think they should have cast you. Look, but the reason, like, they when they're casting Paul Walter Hauser for a role you auditioned for, Mm -hmm. they were getting getting Paul Walter Hauser the whole way, right? That's the whole thing. They were just like, like, oh, we want to see options, but really the studio has their famous guy that they know that they want. And he's good. And it he's good. Sense. So that, that's just sense. what happens. There's no mm-hmm. shame in losing out to a, a guy like a guy who's been won a fucking Golden Globe mm-hmm. and has been the lead of a Clint Eastwood movie. Mm-hmm. That's just like that's just how this fucking industry works. I get it. I get how it works. All right. I don't give a don't shit. Don't be bitter about it. Stop rattling them. I'm gonna rattle them. I can fucking take work your off. arm off of it. How the hell to spoon nation? <laughs> <laughs> Grogu's first word should be a uh, poopy I made. <laughs> like, oh, Grogu. <laughs> Those are his first words. Yeah. <laughs> so Grogu's first words are it is a joke, which does, makes sense because like you see him now and he's like he's like is he like can be funny, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's funny. Are ba- can babies intentionally be funny when they're like I think so. Really? Yeah. There's funny babies that they're not speaking yet. They can be funny. Really? Yeah. All right, so I guess it works. I think so. If it's like a baby's like being playful or something or kind of goofy, yeah, baby can be funny. Yeah, all right. I I wasn't sure. I I truly didn't know if a baby could be funny. You've seen seen Roger Rabbit, right? Star Roger Rabbit, that baby's funny as shit. (laughs) (laughs) It's a hero of mine. When he talks about having a baby dick, that's like, uh, it's home. Uh, all right, let's play a yeah, little- Yeah, why didn't you get cast for that either? <laughs> <laughs> all right, More hung than the-, the spoon man I am. <laughs> Rogu. 
I got a bigger dick than Grogu. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bigger dick than Grogu. That I'm sure of. Man, it would suck if they like in the Mandalorian in the next episode of the Mandalorian. Fucking, they show Grogu's yeah. fucking massive hog. He's got a fucking piece. Look, Look at this guy. Holy shit, Jesus Christ! It's one to one, him yeah. to the fucking hog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Emma, let's hit him with the drop. People hear this podcast to say these two must hate each other sometimes. No, we don't actually hate each other. We like each other. I do other. care about you. Mitch, I love you. We love each we other. We love We're each joking. other. The Doughboys are friends. I love you, Mitch. And you know what? Nick, I love you. Oh, wow, that's so sweet. I do love Nick. Aw. <laughs> Mitch is my friend and I love him. You're a clean man. Looks like your thighs are made up, I have to say. Look in my heart. They look good. Friends nice. bust on each other sometimes. Yeah, that's what happens. That's we what love happens. Each other. Whatever. That was nice. That was a sweet drop. It's a wholesome drop. That was nice. Those are echoes of Love Week, where we had we're, our week where we talked about how much we loved each that other. That was very. That was, that was a good week. Nice. Hi by way, everyone. Em, by the way, Amelia left, which I, I like, saw that real power I, move. I waved goodbye to her. <laughs> All right, guys, start the record. You're good, right? Yeah. <laughs> she was looking at. She was. She. She liked some of, from the. The restaurant we went to. Yeah. Today. She was eyeing some of the food. Yeah. And she didn't get anything from there, which I said was good because it was very, it was expensive. Spoiler yes. alert. Um, but also you were being, it, you were t- in jest because she Oh, no, I was yeah. 100% serious. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been big issues if she got something. Anyways, hi, everyone. Here's to one of the best examples of non-toxic masculinity in media today. Huh. Doughboys. Chris wow. Finke. It's Finke. Thanks, Finke. Yeah. Nice guy. Nice guy. Thanks, Finky. The drop master, we call him? I don't, I don't know. Remember. Who cares? Introduce our guests. Mitch, very, very excited <laughs> to have our, dre- our guests on the podcast. At long last, they host the Improv I was like County. On, I was like, I felt good today. It's crazy that this all happened. I mean, I don't care, really. And you didn't do it intentionally, but this threw me off. It's all the Paul Waffle Hauser? That's yeah, no, all I'm, just, of it? I'm, I'm mad at myself <laughs> for saying, like, come on, why'd you do that? But it happened. Look, over the course of like a week, I got sent like six different things of like, are you going to be in this from Quincy people? <laughs> it fucking sucked. Uh, All I'm right, t- let's introduce our I'm guests, texting cause... Amelia. Amelia, no more Paul Walter Hauser. <laughs> oh <roast, my> please. <laughs> <laughs> he might come on the pod. He said he'd come on the podcast. We'll talk, with the, we'll, we'll talk about it with him then. It was a whole on. thing Emma can explain. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mitch, our guests, overdue. <laughs> Finally on the show. They host the improv comedy podcast, Man Dog Pod, Dan Lippert, Ryan Rosenberg. Dan, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, what thanks a, for what having us. to have you both. Thanks for having us. Nice to hang and eat a little food together and nice to be on the podcast. Too. You pleasure. have a meal in advance of the show and then you do the show. It's, it's, it's fun just hanging out with pals. And it made me want to ask, do you ever combo a record of your own podcast with a meal? You ever make that move? I would say the death of me and Ryan's careers is that we would rather get food than work. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be like, should we meet for breakfast and then do a record? And then we would just eat breakfast for a long time. <laughs> We've probably got like four to five like outlines of movies that are yes. dead because we'd rather go to a diner. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we used to, our office used to be across from the Beachwood Cafe. And so we spent mm. a lot of time there. Mm-hmm. Looking at Christopher Nolan, who wow, would wow. There, yeah, before it became a hot spot that Harry Styles mentioned in a song. Mm. Wow, less Nolan. exciting. Nolan, Nolan's over there. cool. Nolan, yeah. Saw Steve Carell there. Have Whoa. a nice lunch alone. Carell eats there a lot, and I, I, I wow. hope we're not blowing up their spots. Yeah, but we are. Oh yeah, uh, oh. but but they're probably not there now that Harry Styles mentioned it because it is. I don't know if you've been on a weekend. I've never been. I've oh. never been. Period. Um, I just know of it. It's great. Nice aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Food is like fine. It's one of those places that's always changing the menu. Yeah. And you're like, uh, just pick something. It's okay. That's, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that bothers me. Yeah. Um, but now on the weekend, you uh, you might like this. It's like full of hip teams. Uh, mm. And so it takes like two or three hours to get yeah. a table. Weiger there. might He's, like Weiger this. Weiger might yes. like this. Okay, there we go, Mitch, yes. <laughs> but, I like to see what they like, what's what's going on, what's into it. Weiger yeah. like wants to. Befriend them, hey, sit buddy. at the cool kid table. <laughs> guys look like cool teens. <laughs> Did you see Nolan? Did you see like the title page for Oppenheimer and like there was nothing like below it or or like we was just Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer. <laughs> no, it was written Oppenheimer in parentheses. It said pronounced like the Gangnam Style thing. <laughs> oh, oh. Oppenheimer style. <laughs> <laughs> like an A-bomb goes off. 
All right, it makes sense why I can't get rolls. I can't say things. <laughs> can't say words correctly. <laughs> yeah, you butcher the director's name every time you meet. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I like about Chris Nolan, he really looks like Christopher Nolan. When you see mm. him, he's got the slicked back hair, and I've, yeah. every time I've seen him, he's got like a long coat on. He looks like he's directing a movie. You got to like have a like a director look. I feel like that's like a big part of success. We want to be like, oh, that's a director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what what would your director look be? Boy, mm. great question. Like Spielberg's the hat guy. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I kind of like the full suit guys, although those that just becomes so uncomfortable. Right. Full suit as in like leather mask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those guys are great. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're getting just a lot of leather on the sound here. Every time you go across your legs. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's there. I I prioritize comfort. Honestly, that's why I'm dressed like this now. And and for people watching the video feed, you can see that I've I've got shorts. I got I got uh fucking slides on, and I've got just like a you know. A, a very casual, thin polo shirt. That's partly because it gets so fucking hot in the studio that I've just reached a point where I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to be comfortable in here. I'm not going to worry about any other aspect. So I think I would probably lean towards, honestly, like a tracksuit. Maybe be a tracksuit guy. I'm so Ooh. comfortable in tracksuits, and when I travel, I love to wear tracksuits. Yeah, I don't even have to say it. Yeah. Big fat director guy. Come on. <laughs> I'm have the sam. I'm going to be like have a big sandwich, <laughs> eating during takes. Yeah, things like that. That's my style. Uh huh. And also kind of like, kind of like a Dom DeLuise look. I maybe wear like a white shirt. And kind of like a, one of those like a sun hats, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm not. I guess not a sun hat. It would be fancier, kind of like a white, like one of those white like a Panama hats. hat. Yeah, like a Panama, Panama hat. That's yeah. that's kind of my vibe. How about you guys? Yeah, I think these two together, what you both described, is about where I'd like to be. There you go. Comfortable. I like the <laughs> Panama hat. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I mean I dress so much to hide my body. Um, Same. So I don't know if I was a director and it's like, well, if I'm never gonna be on camera again, it doesn't matter. Right, right. That's a great point. Part of me feels like I want to wear like a robe on set. Like oh, a, that's fun. Not, not like naked with a robe, but <laughs> yes. just like to let everybody know that like, hey, we're comfortable here and we can just do the work. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you don't want to be like a horny guy. Like no, that's like no, a different, no. like, not like a Charlie Rose sort of robe situation. Like, right. whoops, it came undone. You know, like <laughs> yeah. you're not doing that. You're just like, I, I'm just comfortable. And you yeah. guys are free to be comfortable too. Exactly. Like maybe like if you pointed to wear pajama pants underneath so they know you got bottoms on, that goes a long way, I think. Mm -hmm. And if horny stuff happens, it happens. Well, no, no. <laughs> no, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, it's very, very excited to have you here. Uh, and and we, we've had you before, Dan, and uh, Ryan, we've never had you before. It's long overdue. It's long overdue. I I, I do want to ask. And Walker and, would be like, we got to get like Connie Tipper on. I'm like, who the fuck is Connie Tipper? <laughs> Connie dead. Tipper was a home run. <laughs> Tipper was great. She writes a blog, ranks T's. I'm like, all right, let's get fucking Connie Tipper on. Do you remember our Tipper the morning run? It was great. People turn that into drops. I do like, want to see the meeting where you're aggressively advocating for me and Ryan to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> All your subjects and you was like, are you Ryan and Dan? Yeah. Let's go, Bo. <laughs> no, this is a constant. Mitch, Mitch loves to blame me for anything. Right. That's just a that constant is thing. Tr it yeah. is true. It, uh, it is true. And then, well, because if I, if I ran the show, it would be like the sort of thing where I just be like, let's get Koalik again. And it would be Koalik yeah. every other week. <laughs> yeah. It's right. Koalik month? What's yeah. going on? I think that's important in a friendship to be able to blame each other for certain things. 100%. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 I get blamed for a lot, too. You yeah. blame me for a lot of things. Yeah. It's uh, fine. Also, if we had Koalik every week, to see him sing the national anthem as the Noid is maybe the... It was maybe the we've had that so we did this live bunch of badness finale, which is our we do this tournament every year for March. Uh, as part of it, we got our our a part of our finale, which we live streamed. We got uh, Matt Kowalik as the Noid to sing the national anthem, and Mitch and I both feel it's the single funniest thing that's ever been on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've never laughed so hard. Wasn't fully happened. dressed up in the he was dressed he was up dressed as, as, the as the Noid, and wow. also not a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Not a singer at all. <laughs> and his daughter was like, you're a superhero. Like, was like saying that to her dad over and over. It was very cute. Very cute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask a little bit because we're going to talk no about- Also, the Noid had COVID. That's another part. That was the, the Noid had COVID. The Noid had That's COVID. True. <laughs> I couldn't avoid the vid. Uh, I want to I, I ask this, which is, 
we're talking about something. We're talking about a healthy chain today. We're talking about some a place that where their whole marketing is like this is like macrobiotic. This is organic. This is farm to table. This is local produce. That's their whole fucking agenda. But Mitch and I love to eat trash, and I suspect the two of you do as well. Like what? Like mm-hmm. like what are some of your favorite indulgences when it comes to food? Right, the, the assumption you made there by you guys. But... I don't know. I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just saying. Good assumption. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty like addicted to McDonald's. Wow. That is something that I I yeah. am, am like ashamed about, but definitely have to uh, admit. What's your standard McDonald's order? I like a double cheeseburger. Great um, menu item. Great menu item. Yeah. Secretly one of the best hamburgers out there. I it's think. so fucking good. Nally yeah. gets the double cheeseburger a lot. She'll get a triple cheeseburger at times. Wow. I prefer the double cheeseburger over the McDouble. I think that extra slice of cheese is worth like the extra 70 cents. The it makes ratio a big difference. is perfect. Ratio is so good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I like the chicken nuggets. Sometimes I'll sub out the chicken nuggets for just like a McChicken sandwich. What, what's your sauce of choice? What's your dipping yeah. sauce for the nugs? Uh, usually just ketchup, but sometimes oh, interesting. honey, not wow. honey mustard, but yeah. just regular just honey. Up. I love honey. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I feel yeah. like, if, I feel like you do that a lot when you're a kid. And then I was like, why did I stop doing honey with nuggets? It's right. a great combo. Great I'm, combo. I one time went out with like a, a friend and his dad. I was spending the night at their house or something. And they made fun of me for using ketchup on my nuggets and they <laughs> only used honey. And I was like. Does everybody use honey? And I have no idea. And it really like shook me to my core for like wow. two years. I was like, "Am I gross for using ketchup?" Like, no. I was just very easily, uh, you know, influenced as a kid. I, I will, I will say that chicken McNuggets with ketchup to me is a waste. Like, you gotta, you gotta dunk it and something. Not yeah, just yeah, a yeah. ketchup. You gotta, you gotta just use a dunk cup, right? I think it's fine with ketchup. I mean, I usually like if I if it, for me that's an in a pinch situation, but I never like I'm disappointed by it. Yeah. I, but I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather have a hot mustard or a honey mustard generally. Barbecue mm-hmm. sauce. Mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. honey mustard. Yeah. Yeah. The McDonald's across the street from Jay's bar. What's your McDonald's? That one's pretty good. Pretty good. That one's pretty, pretty good. good. The one, the one by um, the old UCB Sunset. Yeah. was a pretty good McDonald's. I thought it was a, the, the food would be good. It, it, like like every McDonald's, like it would be had times where it was like hitting enough, but then also like. That was always a place where it would be like, our credit card machine is down. You need to have mm-hmm. cash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be like, oh. And then I would like walk into the Walgreens and get money out of the <laughs> it's ATM. Worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah, and I would yeah, do it. Yeah. Or drive to some other McDonald's. Uh, I, I had to use that bathroom a few times. It's not mm-hmm. a great bathroom. Not a great McDonald's. bathroom. The, 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 the area was, it was like a little, it was a little, it was a little shitty. It yeah. was, it was not the great. And now they've raised it. It's gone, much like UCB. Sunset. Wait, they've raised R A Z E D. Yes. Wow. The no, whole, yeah, that not, whole not, side not, of the parking really. lot, basically. Yeah, I didn't know that. it's just like, gone. Got rid of a college and a McDonald's and a whole thing. How often does a McDonald's get uh, just Fucking like raised bulldozed? It doesn't right. happen. Uh, were, was this when you said you use that bathroom a yeah. lot? Was this after you were teaching at UCB or coaching there? It was usually like before a show. Yeah. It was usually that situation. Yeah. I definitely know that feeling of like, I have to have an anonymous bathroom. Yes, before, 100%. Before I'm at. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. And the UCB bathroom at, at sunset, too, it should have been so much better. I don't know. What, what What was it like? It was like an auto zone. What the fuck was that place before it was <laughs> UCB? It was a halfway house. It was like a theater uh, company. Yeah, it was like a bunch of different things. It was, and it was, Maybe and it was an auto zone at one point. They never, well, it looked like there was a garage or, or it looked oh, like. Oh, yeah, the, below. Yeah, but, but the bathrooms there was also, is that sort of thing what, what I hate in bathrooms, Wags, where like there was two backstage that were like, I'm waiting on you bathroom. You know what I mean? Like you're the only person in their bathroom and like the theater itself echoey. Yeah. I'm okay with the the solo bathroom, but yeah, acoustically it was not ideal. Mm -hmm. Like, and so you kind of had to be like, okay, I want to make sure that not only is, can I, is I do have this bathroom to myself for a little bit, but also there's no one in the vicinity. (laughs) Cause like, that's the issue with the head gum bathrooms too. It's the same thing. It's just acoustically not the best environment. Yeah. Those concrete floors, all the sound is going right underneath the door, not into the hallway. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, okay, everyone. Louder. It's like magnified. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You can't like carpet a bathroom, but I mean, that would be better acoustics for what you're doing in there. Yeah, like I mean, a two hundred one student being like, "You're really funny," and then like going into the bathroom after you and like looking at you, and, like, <laughs> losing all respect for you. Yeah, even if you can like know intellectually what my bathroom is like, like how I am in the bathroom, mm-hmm. to actually viscerally hear it or see it or smell it, <laughs> yeah. will really that's a memory that'll stick with you forever. One hundred percent. I was uh, there one time when he went, and I remember the door closed, and I just started like ah! <laughs> <laughs> screams. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a good way to get yourself amped up, you know. Right. Yeah, pre-show energy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My move, which lags this scene a lot of the times, when I go into an echoey bathroom, including here at Headgum, because I don't want to be embarrassed in front of the hunks. Yes. I I play on my I play music on my phone loud. Mm. So it, it's loud enough that it covers up. It it comes close. Like it is like it will be like like it will be playing like like go ahead with your own life. Leave me. <laughs> you'll, hear like a little, you'll hear a little tweet. <laughs> Song sounds a little different today. A little extra bass. It's live. It's, it's the remix. <laughs> <laughs> what song was that? I didn't recognize uh, My that. Life by Billy Joel, I was oh. saying. It will be also, it will be, <laughs> I'll just play, I'll shuffle and play whatever comes up. But generally you try to keep it to blue collar. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anthemic blue collar. Yeah. <laughs> Allentown, scenes from Italian restaurant. <laughs> usually in the Joel universe. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard of Born to Run, but Born to Shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own Weird Al shit yeah. songs in there. <laughs> Stop saying that about me. I hear you. <laughs> born, to bur- born in the USA, but Born in the Shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just shit again. <laughs> <laughs> this is an issue at my at Palmerston also an issue like uh your old apartment you yeah mean. there yes. was the one bathroom that was never see but I never heard anything that was going on in your bathroom yeah from what from my position and I think it was it, it's just like because it's just a home the home has different acoustics yeah than, they got different acoustics than like a, a, a commercial space it is funny if I was like ha, like ha, like if I was dating someone or if there was a woman over the house I would be like, I'm gonna use the bathroom, and then I would like turn the AC on up on full and turn the TV on. And be like, I'll be back, and she's like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> you're like trying to make sound so I don't hear you shit, mm-hmm. and that is exactly what I was trying to and do. And every time you go to the bathroom, you prep the room for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and just go. And I can tell you have that look on your face, like you have to show. I'm shaking. Yeah. Just put the headphones on your ears and play uh, somewhere of the rainbow, like face off for that little kid. <laughs> It's also because you can't even, like, even if you feel like you prep the environment, you feel like you can't quite get comfortable in there where mm-hmm. you're just like, I really just want to do some work for a bit. I just want to, get like, you know, really, like, like you know, a, a, a fucking just just put the pedal to the metal. You know what I mean? Like, 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 and, and if you feel like you're not going full bore, you sometimes feel like you're having, like, kind of like an incomplete sort of situation. That's not <laughs> ideal either. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's, uh, I wish. I read about Blue Beetle. You know, there was a trailer for Blue Beetle the other mm, day. Yes, I haven't seen it yet. And then I read, this is in the characters because I've read the Wikipedia. I was like, what's Blue Beetle's deal? I want to read about Blue Beetle. And uh, do you know that his, his power, like one of the things with his powers is that he like doesn't have to shit? I didn't know that. Like the, the suit. Like, I don't know the character even. This yeah. is all news to me, Blue the, Beetle. The Blue Beetle, the trailer a came character. out. It's a, yeah, it's a DC character. Okay, and one of his things is. He doesn't have to shit. He's he's like like the the suit takes care of him having to shit it like mm. he can up. shit in the suit. No, the it sh- just metabolizes somehow. Yeah, like it like Ugh. it, it like the, the the suit is like attached to his spine, and so like all the shit it like eats up the shit. Is he that was- what real beetles do? Is that their thing? No, I don't think so. I don't think that I don't I don't I don't think it's involved with beetles. I think it is just like a power of the suit. It's a weird extra thing if it's not what beetles do, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a yeah. weird extra thing to write in. <laughs> and this character. Uh, okay, sure, Greg. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Halo fan theory about how the Master Master Chief suit jacks him off. Have you heard that one? <laughs> no. Really? Yeah, it's just like supposedly like it just like to keeps him focused. The suit jacks him off. So like while he's in combat or like uh It's not like canon, but I guess it's alluded to in some of like the Halo novels that yeah he gets jacked off by the suit but when does it happen <laughs> is my question when is whenever it... he needs to fucking pound off when does it happen for you yeah <laughs> never in battle <laughs> I never do it in battle <laughs> Me and Wags are having a text fight. I'm not sitting there fucking jacking it on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> That's my version of battle. Yeah, right. <laughs> but is it thing where like he's like he's like fucking gunning down aliens and the suit is maybe jacking him off? Maybe I don't know. Apparently with Blue Beetle, he's like fucking I don't know fighting. Uh, who, the, who the fuck? Doctor Strange? Who's he fighting? <laughs> Uh, I think maybe he's in like the Shazam world. He's fighting Shazam. Maybe fighting Black Adam. Uh, he's fighting Black Adam. Mm-hmm. Uh, the power balance of power in the DC universe has changed. Blue Beetle is fighting Black Adam, 
and he's like, uh, he's fucking shitting while he's doing it. He might be. He I might don't know, be. I don't know how it works, but I was kind of, if I had to be a superhero, that would be it now. To, be, to not ever have to shit? Your shit? Yeah. That, that would be fantastic. I think it's fucking nasty. I also think you'd miss shitting. No, you wouldn't. I think you would. I think you have to be humbled. Yeah. What does that mean? Not you, Mitch. Oh, okay. Hey, we humans, you know, yes. you need the dark and the light. You need to be humbled mm. at the toilet so that you can move around the world knowing that you do that. That is fair. That's fair. Yeah. It, 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 it is very humbling to, as a man, to stand up, turn around and face the toilet and wipe. That's as you know how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you face the toilet out of respect? I, I, face, I face the toilet out of respect. <laughs> I got to give it a little bow. Right, right, right. Uh, look, I don't want to just talk about shit here. I want to talk about food a little bit. It is the thing we talk yeah. about the most besides food is shit, I would say, on the podcast, right? The light and the dark, you know what I mean? Mm. Yes, the light there and the dark. Good point. The food has to come in and go somewhere. Uh, Lipper, you ever fuck with McDonald's? Or you, what, what do you do for uh, fast food? You know, th today, I I'm very uh, uh, prone to suggestion, mm -hmm. and I heard uh, two seconds of a McDonald's ad where they're talking about this new chicken sandwich they yeah. have. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll get that before the record. And then I was like, no, we're going to eat. Let me just eat it tonight in shame instead of beforehand in shame. <laughs> but I, so I, that's kind of when I'll do McDonald's or like when I'm like starving and in a pinch. I yeah. like the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. That's, that's a good solid menu item. Yeah. That's a good um, item. But I'm mostly when I do fast food, I, I have this logic that doesn't really make sense where I'll do, I'll usually do chicken sandwiches because I think they're healthier. Even though they're like slathered in mayo and sure. cheese and bacon, usually when I get them, uh, so I get the I get the like whatever their crispy do, chicken is there. Now. Okay, do you, I was gonna say, do you do grilled ever? I, that was like a move that Rare. I when I was like a fat middle schooler, I remember like we, I go to Burger King with my dad and be like, I'm gonna get like a grilled chicken sandwich. That's good, right, Dad? And my dad was like, Yeah. <laughs> right. Sure, son. Yeah. Disappointed. <laughs> I did that stuff too. I did like the Weight Watchers points system. Oh, yeah. But like when I was pretty too young for it, and it was like, yeah, we're still going to Carl's Jr., but I'm only eating half of the bun. <laughs> or like I would turn one burger into like half of a double burger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And it's like, just eat a vegetable. That's the <laughs> right. point. Eat healthy food. I was in Fit Kids. Oh. This is true. I was uh, when I was like in middle school. I was in a, in a thing called Fit Kids at the YMCA, and uh, it was like for you know tubby little teenage, well, right. not even uh, preteens. And I was like using, and then there was I remember there was like an article in like the Quincy Sun about like me, and I was like lifting weights as like a preteen, uh, as a part of, of like doing bench presses, like yeah, using like the Nautilus equipment at the YMCA, okay. yeah. But fit fit kids. That's what it was called. Fit kids. I think it was fit kids. Did I say it was something. Did I say fit teens? It's fit kids. Fit kids you said fit yeah. kids. Fit kids. I was in fit kids. It didn't work, obviously. <laughs> like you'd think that that guy would go on to be like, you know, continue to work out, but I I did not. But it this me. was this specifically like, hey, we're gonna get uh, you know, it's fit kids, but we're getting maybe kids who could use some more exercise. Was that the idea behind it? Was yeah, it I think it was like everyone? fat kids. Okay, I think it was it. like a bunch of fat kids yeah. that they were like sitting, like trying yeah. to work out a little yeah, bit. We can't call it fat kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put, put another eye in there. Um, that's a uh, yeah. That's like. Uh, I, I, boy, I don't know. Like, I, I did so much like fitness stuff as a kid, but it was, I never feel like it was ever like that targeted. Like, I always feel like, like, I remember like the presidential fitness thing, which I don't know if they still do that, but that was a big thing. Like, do you remember like doing like a sit and reach and like doing a bunch of jumping jacks and shit and getting some like sort of presidential commendation? Yeah. yeah, it was very yeah. strange. Which is strange because I don't think of presidents as like fit. They all kind of look like <laughs> shit. <laughs> right? I mean, like Ob Who, Obama's. Fit? I guess handsome. Obama was pretty fit. Biden looks okay for like a man of his age. Mm -hmm. Sure, Clinton was not in shape when he was in office, but he's gotten he's slimmed down now. Trump is an athlete, I would say. Yeah, Trump is an athlete. Yeah, <laughs> doctors say he's like one of the fittest men they've ever seen. <laughs> um, uh, God, Reagan was a monster, but he was not like he had. Both him and Bush were like kind of like felt like they were in shape old guys. He's right? a movie star, right? He's a movie I mean, star. Yeah. 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 Uh, I definitely wasn't doing it thinking. Like, oh, we're supposed to look like the president. Right. I, uh... right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait a minute. Hey, Mitch, what the fuck were you talking about? <laughs> They're showing you pictures of the president with his shirt off. Like, Go ahead, man. 
You're supposed to look at the end result. You're supposed to look like the president. Right. <laughs> I think that most presidents are healthier. I think Jimmy Carter is healthier than me now. Wait, who's he? No, he's alive, right? He's in hospice yeah, right he's, now. Yeah. Hanging in there. <laughs> so yeah, you know what? Good. 50 50. <laughs> If we both took the presidential <laughs> test right now. His think... last act was owning you in the presidential fitness test. <laughs> <laughs> Banged out like 11 push-ups. You should look like an idiot. I'm not going to let this kid beat me. I don't know how he sounds. <laughs> he kind of sounds like a, isn't he kind of like a, isn't he kind of like Molasses Boy, Alan, uh, Alan McLeod. Yeah, he's right? a southern dude. Yeah. Kind of like a hand kill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you, I want to talk about grocery stores a little bit, because this is a grocer. I, I can't imagine mm. shopping at Erewhon as my main grocery store, but people do that. I, I uh, What are your grocery store routines? Are you are you, are you grocery store dudes? Because I feel like, Mitch, you sometimes fall into, like, no grocery store trips for a bit, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I've, I've been I've been buying fruits lately, so I... That's fruit, good. Yeah, I've been doing, I've been doing, uh, I was going to say, like, God damn it, Bobby, but he's talking about Bobby Kennedy. That's good. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. I thought it was worth going back to. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz he was trying to, you know, win the Democratic nomination from him. Yeah, so yeah. that was a whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God, that makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh I I uh I've been going I've been doing the, the this is a p- bad version of it, but I've been getting Instacart occasionally. Uh, and I'll tip. I tip my shoppers well, yeah. always. So I, I, I do do that. But I, but I'll do that for like uh, for for fruits and stuff like that. Uh, I really. You like- know what? Is Instacart bad? Because I always get shame for for using delivery. People apps. shame you. I mean, they shame us for pretty much everything. I shouldn't pay attention to it. But the delivery apps, in which we don't even like that much, but also like Instacart doesn't seem like it's. That bad. I right? minimize my use of delivery apps. I don't really use them in, in, in general, but I will. I'm not saying that to be like that's just my own. I I also live in a walkable area, so it's easy for me to get to things. But I was going to yeah, say yeah. the the and I like getting out. Um, I've been to the grocery store three times in the last two weeks. Yeah, but, on my own. But I'm saying I don't know if Instacart is a bad business, but I don't think any of these are like any of these are good businesses. Sure. They're all kind of shitty, you know. But yeah, also yeah. like whatever. If you're uh, you're you're tipping well, you're. Doing whatever you're doing your part, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm curious uh, though, though, like about grocery stores, like go, like because I actually like going to the grocery store. For me, it's like, oh, it's like uh, it's, I have the same feeling of going to Target. I like, I kind of mm-hmm. like that. I kind of get by into that yeah. retail therapy a little bit. It depends on what time of day it is, I guess. I don't like when I people like it. I don't like when people are there. You like going to a crowded. We were just talking about not this. necessarily crowded, but just like going to the to do my shopping. I don't mind doing that. I like going to Costco. We were just talking about this before, I like, going to, like the, a Trader Joe's before the pod, but. Gelson's has turned into kind of like a, it's like, a, it's the spot. You can go and get drinks at Gelson's. We were just talking about this a few minutes ago. It's yeah. turned into like a social place. Yeah. Yeah. So people, those are people that really like the grocery store. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's way They're too like, much. I don't mind. like I shop here. I would love to leave drunk. <laughs> <laughs> my mom really loves the grocery store. She would go like every morning and like get her coffee there and like make coffee mm. there. And I like it, that. And it became like where like her best friends were. Like she knows all the cashiers and like she nice. just loves that little like communal thing or whatever. And she's she kind of keeps to herself, like doesn't have a ton of friends. So that's her little like social outlet. She just like goes to the grocery store and is like, hey, Sonia, how you doing? And I they talk that. about their kids. And it's yeah, it's cute. That's great. Yeah, that's cute as hell. It'd be funny if she heard this too and be like, I don't have a ton of friends. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> oh, shit. No, by choice, by choice. <laughs> You're fucking grounded. How do you like that? Oh, man. Too old. <laughs> hey, guys, I got to go home. <laughs> I really like going to the grocery store like with a partner. I feel like mm. it's a really like cute, like yeah. nice. It's almost like a little date. You know what I mean? You're sure. Going to plan your meals out for the week and all that stuff. That's nice. But I currently don't have one, so so I don't really go to the grocery store that much. But you know what? As with a friend too, you can go with friends. Sure. I'll, I'll go to the grocery store with you. Yeah. We'll go oh, by the, we'll go to that Gelson's bar, we'll get shit faced. It'll be a blast. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what just happened here? You, you guys are grocery buddies. You guys well, are gonna yeah, go shopping together. Yeah, right. we are. How fun is that? Yeah. Are you gonna be grocery friends? I'll go out to the grocery store. Yeah, I'll go anytime. You saying we, you're a pair and we're a pair? Oh, you mean the two of yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That felt safe. That felt safe. Mm. 
I think you can't have two guys with long hair shopping together. Right. I think everyone's like, what? Uh, this is creeps. <laughs> this is creeps. <laughs> Where are the teens at? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we got a lot to talk about with Erewhon. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with more Doughboys. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Wags, you know, in a given week, I think I spend more time on the Doughboys podcast than I do taking care of myself. Wow, you got to balance that, Mitch, because it's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. But when we spend all our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. You know, Mitch, I've benefited from therapy. I know you've benefited from therapy. A lot of people we've loved have benefited from therapy. That's right, Wise. I think I'm a better person when I'm in therapy. That is the truth, Mm -hmm. 100%. Getting things out of your head. You get some sludge. You get sludge in your head. You gotta get you gotta work it out. You gotta you gotta you gotta talk it out. And it's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries, empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Doughboys today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Doughboys. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, The Spoon Man, and I want to talk to you about our next partner, which has truly made a positive impact on the most important people in my life. No, I'm not talking about Wags over here or Kowalik. I'm talking about my cats. That's right. Wow. My cat's old food would stink. It smelled terrible, Wags. You came into the house. You smelled it. What's the smell? It's not me. Cat food? Yes, it's not me. It's the cat food. That's what I say to you. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm so happy I found our next partner, Smalls. Mitch, it's a new year, and you've decided to update the cat food that you feed your cats. That's why you, the listener, have got to try Smalls. That's right, Wags. It's 2023, for crying out loud. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Now is the time to update your cat food with Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge, and it's delivered right to your door. Smalls was started back in 2017 by a couple of guys home-cooking cat food in small batches for their friends. Today, Smalls has served millions of meals to cats all across America. At this point, you might be wondering, why can't I just feed my cat kibble? When it comes to big pet food, let's just say you don't want to see how the sausage is made. Think pink sludge getting extruded at extremely high temperatures. Ew. If that sounds gross, Wags, imagine having to eat it every day. Smalls takes a different approach. It is cooked gently, just like food would be in your own kitchen, and they work with leading cat nutritionists to create recipes that are exactly what your little furball craves and needs. After making the switch to Smalls, 78% of cat owners reported their cats had shinier and softer fur, and 90% reported overall health improvements, and that is a big deal. Wow. I said fur weird, but still. The, the point stands. People know what you meant. They know mm. you're talking cat fur. The team at Smalls is so confident your cat will love their product that you can try it risk-free. That means they will refund you if your cat won't eat their food. Wags, you know what? When it comes to Wally Nurmer's fur, they're much soft. They're, they're softer cats now, Wags. They got a nice coat. Their fur is nice and fluffy. They love their food. They're always crying for it. Wally Nurma love Smalls. They love that soft cow. They want to eat that soft cow. Wow. I don't blame them. Remember, higher quality ingredients mean a healthier and happier life for your kitty. So head to smalls.com slash doughboys and use promo code doughboys at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code doughboys for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code doughboys for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Do it. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with the host of Man Dog Pod, Dan Lippert, Ryan Rosenberg, talking Erewhon. Now, look, I got a little bit of runway here to discuss Erewhon. Mitch founded in 1966 in Boston by uh, by a married couple of Japanese immigrants, Michio and Evelyn Kushi. Now, the Kushis were early macrobiotic food advocates, wow. and they named their chain for a dystopian Victorian sci-fi novel by author Samuel Butler. This was published in the 18th century. I'm sorry, the 19th century, 1800s. 
And it was basically the inspiration for George Orwell's 1984. He like, like loved this book and then used this uh, as his point of reference for his own creation. So anyway, the Cushies found this chain, name it after uh, this, this novel, which means nowhere backwards, Erewhon. Turn those letters around, nowhere. Uh, they, I truly never knew that. I never knew I didn't it was know that either. backwards. I didn't know that either. I thought it was just like a fancy sound and word, which it is. They moved to L.A. in 1968. They opened the Beverly Boulevard location near the Grove, which is still standing. Um, then in 2011, they- Wait, s- and what year was that when they moved? 1968. So Jesus. it was only in Boston for a couple of years. Yeah, and they yeah. moved out to L.A. But it's also been, a, it's been, it's been around for It's been around, around for a long time. That neighborhood has changed a lot. The Grove didn't used to exist. Now it's there. This was Rick Caruso's uh, gigantic outdoor shopping center that's like- this huge tourist destination in the city now, huge commercial district. In 2011, uh, Tony and Josephine and Tochi buy the company and begin expanding citywide. And although it seems ubiquitous everywhere uh, in L.A., it's only in the city. It's only eight locations all in L.A. County, and it's now owned by private equity. So it's gone from being this single location, small business to being like this, you know, the next Whole Foods uh, under mm-hmm. different ownership. Uh, and that's where we are today. It's funny because it's kind of a dystopian story. It is very much so, yes. Uh, like <laughs> that they started this like nice macrobiotic thing. Yeah. And now it's it's like a representation of The Grove and Rick Caruso and right. like a lifestyle that is very unattainable for yeah. most people. 100%. It's dystopian th- for the fact that Caruso lost. And- <laughs> <laughs> You're it's, feeling pretty political. You came in, your eyes were all red because Trump got uh, arrested. I'm <laughs> fucking okay? pissed off. <laughs> I'm talking to the other fit kids. We're going to try to break them out. <laughs> Group of fat ki- fit kids trying to break Trump out. <laughs> A lot of the fit, fit, a lot of the fit kids were at January 6th. A lot of crossover. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it, <laughs> this place. Natalie Natalie said uh, said this to me. She was like, "I I hate this place, but I kind of like it." And that's kind of how I feel in terms that's of good... it. Fucking sucks. Like it sucks what it represents. What you were saying, Lippert. It, like it is dystopian. It is like, a, hey, this is a place that's just for the richest, like you know, most obnoxious. Uh, people in LA, basically, like that's that's its market share. Uh, they have a fucking Haley Bieber smoothie, which we tried. Like yeah. that's their whole thing. That's who they're marketing it towards. But the food is kind of good. It's not doesn't always hitting, but it's also so outrageously expensive that it's kind of an insult to even shop there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, is it worse than Whole Foods or any of those? It's like, more expensive than Whole Foods. It's yeah, more I think so. Than I think Foods. notably it, more expensive than Whole Foods. Is it Foods. worse? I hated no Whole Foods when I went in there. I don't know how I would, I would feel about you hated the vibe. You're saying, or you hated the food? I hate I hated the vibe of of Whole Foods. I guess I should have done my due diligence and gone into the store at some point. Whole Foods uh, also got absorbed by Amazon, Amazon so yeah. that makes it extra, like you know, shitty. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a sip of this, by the way, the pineapple dream. Yes, it's sitting here. I want to try it before I go. Dan, you tried this, but I like, tried it. This, I mean, it looks fancy. It's like a you know a glass yeah. bottle thing. It looks kind of fancy. I. Yeah, was, it meant, was it meant to be tried on the air? Did I jump the gun on no, it? No, not okay, at all. Good. Actually, no. And it's it, you're doing what I did. It's like a it's yeah, it's a pull top. It's a yeah. popper top. Yeah, you can't there it is. There you go. Okay, there we go. Pretty orange for a pineapple drink. It's Pretty really orange. I agree with that. What are the other components there? Just pineapple. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, orange. There we go. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. <laughs> Strawberry as well. Mm. Mitch is taking a sip for our audio listeners. Substantial chub. That's chub, pretty, I meant to it's say. It's pretty fucking good. Wow. You want to try it? Sure. All right, the bottle's being passed around. It was probably my favorite of the things we had. Wow, it's, interesting. It's, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. I think wow. that it's That's pretty a high good. quality juice. It's pretty good. I, I hope I'm not jumping the gun on this. Not but, at all. But to me, it seems more like a- uh, Thank you. I would go there for a juice over a, a meal. Yeah. Even though the juices are, I mean, this was what? $14, $18? Oh, yeah, <laughs> the oh, price it, on this it, tag is $11. $11. Now, you do, get, you do have insane. a dollar rebate on this bottle when you return it. Really? Yeah. That's nice. I do like that they have a glass bottle. It's a nice bottle. Yeah, Mitch, you can hold on to that. That's fucking good juice. You can turn it's that ball into a Molotov cocktail on January 6th, too. <laughs> <laughs> Air one Molotov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> a little thick. I don't know if it'll break and do what I want it to do, but uh, <laughs> have to consider. <laughs> Uh, the yeah, it's, uh, boy, it's, uh, I don't know where to begin. I mean, we should we can start with our meal, which was 
we all we just got a bunch of stuff and we all kind of put it in our own orders and then just ate it all here at Headgum Studios. I have this grocery store was partly on my mind because a new location over and open in Culver City that I've kind of been inside kind of as a curiosity. I bought some some strawberries from there. They were like super expensive, but they were good strawberries. They do have good produce there. But I just I can't see myself regularly shopping there. And and then for people who aren't in the city and, and aren't familiar with this, it is like it feels pointedly cramped. Like they have like like it, it like intentionally kind of smaller, you know, floor plans, the the uh uh the aisles are seem narrower than other grocery stores. They're just absolutely packed, like like you know, floor to ceiling with merchandise. And then it's a lot of like they've got a lot of supplements. They've got, but they've also got a lot of produce. They've also got a lot of just like high end, like you know, uh, oils and bottles of wine and shit. It's just it feels like it's just the expensive stuff that you get at like a Whole Foods or or you know like a Trader Joe's or something like that. It's just the high end is is has been collected there. It feels like a supplement to your regular grocery store. It feels like 100%. your regular grocery store might not have the like oils and the supplements that you're talking about, but this place also has like a pretty nice deli. So you could yes. pick up like good hot food and a specialty thing, but I wouldn't buy like eggs or milk there. It yeah. Seems like. That's the other thing is that, that you're mentioning about is yes, they, they, they have all the staples, but you know, it's all at a, at a premium. Um, but they do have an extensive hot bar, an extensive prepared food section, and that's what we largely, uh, you know, took advantage of for today's meal. Because it's like, bitch, we did our grocery store month, uh, which you spearheaded back in the day, and that was like a thing where we went to a lot of these, some of these. Locations. Why are you gonna say I spearheaded? It was a bad. Was that what you're trying to say? Was it a bad? Your, it was your thing. Was it bad? I thought it was a good month. Wasn't it was it? a good month. Why did you? Uh, why did you infer I was saying something negative? You should also call like, it by its the actual the name of the month, if you don't mind. Friendly Green Grocer Spoon Man's Grocery Store Month. <laughs> I think that's what yeah. it was. <laughs> There's also like we just hit two timelines. There's the one where Weiger said that you you did it, and you're mad that because you think it was an insult. And there's the other reality where he didn't mention it, and you're like, you forgot to mention that I did. That, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> so we we kind of hit the hot bar and we we hit the prepared food section. I mean, I'll just say what I what I ordered. My order was I got an organic turkey Reuben. I got the Erewhon Ranch kale chips. I got the Haley Bieber strawberry glazed skin smoothie, and then I got a vegan chocolate cake Wait, to hold on share. A can you say that again? It's the Haley Bieber's Strawberry Glazed Skin Smoothie. Glazed Skin Smoothie? Glazed Skin Smoothie. What the fuck are they talking about? I think the idea is it's supposed to give your skin a glaze. <laughs> like, it's supposed to give you, like, a nice, like, you know, look to yourself. Mm, yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, our thoughts are all in the same spot here. Yes, our thoughts are with <laughs> where glazed is normally used on skin. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking cum, Wags. We're talking. We're talking. Yeah, get what we're talking cum. You know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. didn't, he make, didn't he make the subtext text? I got it. <laughs> and then a slice of chocolate cake that you didn't want to share. I with was anyone. fine with sharing it. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> I said I did like I said. Hey, here's my order. I was down to share everything, and I offered everything to share. You got like you uh, Im, you said. Wait, oh hold on. Let me. I'm gonna dig it up. I offered. I, I got another slice of chocolate cake so the the guests and I could try it uh, because why didn't why didn't want to share it? You guys. No, I it. was fine sharing it. I don't know where this came from. This came out of nowhere. You uh, said, "Okay, should I get my own cake or will you split?" Uh, why? You can try sushi and buff cauliflower. You can try everything really. And that, okay, here you set your own cake you wanted, which was the vegan blackout cake. Mm -hmm. Forget Weiger's nasty ass cake that he won't share. Uh -huh. Where, this is coming, this is totally your invention. What about me thinks makes you think I would not share food? I've shared so many You don't want to share you. it, it's fine if you don't want to share it. We can, so we can get our own slice, it doesn't matter. I didn't say I didn't want to share it, I was fine sharing what do you, how do, it. What do you guys think the vibe was in there? Do you think it was a cake that wanted to be shared or no? I think the conversation had clearly happened. Mm -hmm. So when like Weiger was like, you can have some cake. But it was like he knew that, you know, he had to offer it. I, I just felt like I had walked in the room. My parents had just argued. And I, and I didn't know what the truth was, you know. This is all in Mitch's head. Here, hold on. I sent my, here's, here's my order. Mitch responded $18 to the cost of the Haley Bieber smoothie, which is outrageous. I said, place is fucking outrageous. I figure we can all taste the smoothie. That's me offering for us to share the smoothie. Mitch, I was about to order one. Should we just get one? Me, if you're fine sharing sips, then yeah, I don't think we need two $18 smoothies. Mitch, I'm fine sharing sips. Yeah, I wanted that chocolate cake too. Now, I don't respond to this. 
because I'm doing other things. <laughs> <laughs> you immediately reply with chicken taquitos. You're like, oh, one of those, ch- one of those. You want chicken taquitos? I didn't get them. I, you that, didn't I, end up getting I, that. Yeah, yep. We didn't get the chicken taquitos. Uh, there's a bunch more stuff. And then you added, should I get my own cake or will you split? Meanwhile, you are responding to me on another text chain. What are you talking about? Where? <laughs> We're talking about <laughs> WrestleMania on another text chain. Well, yeah, but so what? It's a different topic. Mm. This is work stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know why we're relitigating re- this. There's nothing about- You my- didn't want to share the cake. You got your I own share, slice. I share things all the time. I did not get that cake for my, myself alone. You got your special slice for yourself. It was not our, for me. And we got a slice, too. And we all got to try the cake. We were happy to try it. And uh, just for people who are just listening, uh, Weiger has Vince McMahon's mustache now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that guy's he's back, huh? He's just he's, he's back. back. He's a good he's guy. Back. Oh fuck, he's yeah. just he's back. It's so it's so crazy because everyone's liked. I don't know if you guys follow wrestling at all, but like everyone's been so like happy since he's been gone. The shows have been better. Like it's been it's like it's been completely different. And now he just fucking, he came back. He just came back the other day. He just decided, he was like, I'm back in. I'm doing it again. And the fucking, and then the first show that he's like fully back fucking sucks. It was he's, last He's going to die in the share. It's going to, it's going to, that's what it, you know, whatever. It, it's, it's kind of the staying power is kind of remarkable, even though he's like, he's a fucking goblin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, you're saying WrestleMania sucked or the first show? The first, after the, fir- the Raw after WrestleMania was really bad. And, and he it, programmed that. And yeah. that's what that people were saying that he was like back in po- like full power that night. He like sold his kids out. It is crazy that there is Succession is a popular <laughs> show and it's like, like, oh, that shows when you watch it, I'm sometimes like, this is like too much or whatever. And then like Vince McMahon is, is just worse. He's a worse, <laughs> he, right? He's worse than. Wouldn't you say he does worse things? There's is never worse? is Vince McMahon worse than Logan Roy. Vince McMahon is worse <laughs> than Logan worse. Roy. He is. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he's a, the Sumner Redstone also just a complete piece of shit. Like I, I read that we, we we talked about the podcast, but I read that whole book about that that, that came out pretty recently. Um, called Unscripted. That's just about his the whole succession of his family and just what a fucking monster he was. Same sort of thing. It's just it's amazing these guys can just they have their entrenched power and they can just stick around forever, no matter right. what their their ill deeds. I um, wonder. I wonder what will happen with like our children and like the heirs to Doughboys. <laughs> like if they will. Yeah, are you guys gonna give up that throne easily? Yeah. No way. You guys are both dying in the chair. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> both dying in the chair like soonish. Too. <laughs> 45, 45, 50, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 45 50 minutes <laughs> <laughs> you guys that's how this episode you just <laughs> feel our pulses and walk out <laughs> i'm glad his last act was to have us on finally like, oh, great. the ambulance has been waiting out there for a um uh uh what? oh oh that cake did did end up being good i don't know if we're talking about the that cakes right were now. good i think the cakes were a highlight and i will say that when i've had desserts from this place uh, that's usually been the stuff that I think they do best. I think it's kind of, it's, it's you know, I think vegan desserts you can do pretty well with because you can just load it up with sugar. I think that go, that that's like, tends to be kind of the the easier, uh, you know, plant-based move, I feel like, versus some of the savory dishes. So, yeah, I th- but I think they do have a pretty good vegan bakery there. And not all their stuff is vegan, but it feels like the majority is. Both Did I throw ke- you off? Were. With a, uh, you threw me off so fucking bad. Because this is the thing. <laughs> I, when have I ever not shared things with you? You know what's the problem with sharing things? It's you. So this is just projection from your side. <laughs> You're the person who doesn't want to share shit. You get all mad because I ate something that you wanted. Wags. I was trying to give you a hard time. You were. I- you succeeded. You gave me a hard time. Oh, you feel good about yourself. Fucking pissed. I was just trying to fucking needle you a little bit. Yeah, well, bit. you did. Good job. <laughs> Pricked me pretty good there. Your little needling. Then you come back and you say, I don't share. I share everything. I'll, sh- I'll fuck. I shared everything today beside my I, burrito. You did not. You got a bite of it. I did no got a bite of your did. burrito. I share too. Yeah, I share too. This is a, yeah, this is the whole thing. We now share. I am mad when you say that I don't share, you piece of shit. You don't share sometimes. That's not true. I share with you all the time. Things you don't want to share. Is this why neither of you slept well last night? You were up thinking about this. Emma's mentioning we didn't. We both got bad nights. Neither sleep. Of we, us. we were both kind of cranky from bad nights. I've sleep. been playing Resident Evil Four. Yeah, scary. And it is kind. Of, it is scary. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard. It's almost too hard. I don't mm. know if I'm getting older and worse at video games, which is like a pathetic <laughs> no, thing to think about. Uh, but 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 I, I think it's a little hard. But I went to bed. I, I was tossing and turning all night, Wags. I, I got, Do you um, drink while you play or anything like that? 
I, I don't. I, I, I'm, I, I usually am sober in the house, boringly. Were uh, you having nightmares about like La Plaga or like about like the dude with the chainsaw? Maybe I will. Maybe it did affect me in some way. Hmm. Why? You're a very generous sharer. You are too. You're a generous man. I can't believe this bothered you. You well, share. It just, was, just wasn't true. I'll say you guys were both very generous today. There was quite a bit to choose from from the Erewhon. I, you I share. You just, it was a weird thing with your cake. You didn't it want was, to share I your did cake. Oh my, this is totally invented. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a little comment on the food at Erewhon. Please. Is that okay? Yeah. This also, is something... will, you, will you end it with saying whether you think Wags is a good share will, or not? Okay, will, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say they, they do a thing there that like sometimes I don't like about like healthy food places. Yeah. Where, like, mm-hmm. Because they have healthy, good food, they just sort of like – put a bunch of it on there like i had the chicken avocado sandwich or something like that and just the ratio of what was on there was off there was like too much avocado and it was just mm. kind of like mushy and and strange but i really liked the bread all the food tasted fresh it just didn't really feel like a chef made it you know what yeah. i mean no i'm with you that that that's a that's a great note and that's a great characterization of a few of their menu items i will say the organ- organic turkey reuben i got which was pretty relatively simple. It was like a a marble rye, uh, a uh, you know turkey, some kind of cheese. I'm actually unclear on what it was, and then you know like a like a pickled cabbage, like that was like pretty straight ahead. Except it was just completely dry. It was a total dry guy. I didn't have any condiments at all. I, I, actually, yeah. I got some like hot sauce from the the fridge, and then also like legit ketchup. I was putting ketchup on a Reuben because those are the condiments that were available to Headgum Studios. Just because it wasn't just it, so it wasn't completely dry. What I was chewing on. It's and a really Reuben, unsatisfactory sandwich. Yeah, for Reuben. The whole thing is that it's all you know grilled or moist or has what exactly. Russian dressing or yeah, something. Russian yeah, Russian dressing. Give yeah, me some yeah. sort of dressing. And I I think I get that this place doesn't want to have like a packet that's inside of it. They don't want to have like a mayo packet in there that you can spread on or whatever. Yeah. Not that it should even be mayo, but they don't, but, they, but like this absolutely could have needed that. Yeah, why don't put a side of, why don't put a little cup of Russian dressing on there the side? There you go. Give me some of that. Yeah, that, that was this a sucked. really, that sandwich sucked. Really unsatisfactory sandwich. And, and that had, was my main thing. Had, I just want to say you had no problem sharing that. You were like very down to share that one. <laughs> Shared the cake. <laughs> Shared so much of the cake. I did try both pieces of cake just to, for the truth. Yeah. I the sand- try both pieces. It, it was an ugly sandwich. Really ugly. Um, yeah. I I, th- I think that sandwich was like indicative of what I, I felt with most of the things there, which is if you're eating at like a healthy place, don't don't even try to make the unhealthy stuff. Like wow. don't make me your blank Reuben or your yes. blank bacon, egg, and cheese. I like or that. I like that. It's like, like yeah. because I'm just going to be disappointed in wishing I had the real thing. Mm-hmm. And that one was the best example where you look at that and it's like, this is- an insult. To they should just put in like a bad food corner. It's like <laughs> over here we have tater tots, breakfast burritos. It's really small, but over here we have a deep fryer and a grill, and it's like normal food you would want. Yeah. The four of us on our yeah, shopping buddy trips. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All the boyfriends with like their yoga girlfriends who go in and want real food. <laughs> it's just a clogged corner. <laughs> just fucking... yeah. That was that was the other thing. Is that Amelia said she was like, I felt like the ugliest person in there. Not true, Amelia. Did that? That's a hundred percent not the truth. But I was like, if that's the case, I I'm gonna I don't want to go in there. I'm gonna yes. like shit around yeah. these people. It feels it feels it feels elitist in that way. Where I like, if I'm in like the Westgate Mall or whatever. Uh, I like I like don't mm-hmm. I don't like wa- the Century City Mall there. Like I'm like I feel out of place. Yeah, it's like how I walk here. through first class really quickly. You know, it's <laughs> right. like oh, I don't want these people to see me looking regular in my shorts or whatever. It is. Yeah, you get really. I mean, and that's the kind of dynamic there. It's it's like the the person who's it's someone who's in like full yoga apparel at like 2 p.m. on a weekday. Did it's you say just yoga like, or Yoda. Uh, I mean yoga, but you will okay. see like a Yoda in there. <laughs> Kale salad, I will order. <laughs> the, no, but like like the kind of, you know the kind of person who's like my day, de- my calendar is just doing activities. Like mm-hmm. that's like I don't have any sort of job or anything. I can just go like take a yoga class in the middle of a day of a weekday, and then I go to Erewhon and get myself a fucking forty dollar lunch. And right. that's like that's like you know the crowd. If you go to like yeah. the Santa Monica location. Those are the kind of people you'll see. There. Like a podcaster. You yeah, might like see a podcaster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys normally do these in full yoga gear. <laughs> uh, the uh, the ranch kale chips. I don't know if everyone had some of these. Mitch, you had some of these. I don't love kale chips. I don't mind kale. The ranch here was meant to be like an approximation of like a cool ranch. 
I just felt like it did. Uh, these two things just did not sync up. It was they, like Cool they Ranch made powder. Made me want to throw up. I thought they were kind of gross, kind of yeah. putrid. The, the like texture was really weird. Yes. It was like because when you hear kale chip, I, I'm imagining like kind of more crispy. Right. This was like thick and soft. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's no kind of like a, like a seaweed, you know, like eating a dry seaweed. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's that's it's a it was a very funny uh, uh, man versus woman uh, thing because you wags you and I were eating these uh-huh. and we were like oh these fucking suck and then uh, uh, Anya and Amelia were eating them and they're like these are pretty good and oh, then, they like them yeah and then wags and I were like yeah they're pretty good <laughs> <laughs> we did go back on it yeah. <laughs> no I didn't I didn't really like these I I just like. I'm out. Give me some regular ass chips. It's 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 like what Ryan was saying. Yeah. Um. The strawberry glazed skin smoothie. I will say. Also, I, I'll just say this: kale chips are. That is. That sucks. I'd rather kale have a kale side su- salad. I know that we yeah. want some sort of crunch. I know people like like that's a texture that we like, but just like if I want something crunchy, honestly, something healthy for, with crunch, I'd rather have like a handful of nuts. Like give me give me some almonds versus the kale chips. They just they just weren't working for me. Someone who eats kale chips regularly is like regularly is like someone who yells at their nanny a lot. <laughs> that's, what, that's what's in my that's what's in into my head. <laughs> and uh, it's probably because they're eating kale chips all the time. They're just yeah. Miserable, you know? <laughs> unhappy. So the glaze skin smoothie comes in like a jar, and mm. it's pretty substantial. It is again to reiterate eighteen dollars for $18. a smoothie. Eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars. And to me, I was like sipping this and, you know, if you blind taste tested this with something like from a quench or from like a press juicery, I would not be able to tell which one was the $18 uh, Erewhon celebrity tie-ins like uh, smoothie. It it Mm -hmm. tasted like, I don't know, it tasted like a strawberry smoothie with some other components. A lot of coconut, like you were saying, Mitch. Yeah, there was a lot of coconut Mm -hmm. like water flavor in it or whatever. It just, it just, it felt like, oh, it's like made with coconut milk or whatever. And I, that. Yeah. Is the overwhelming taste of it to me. Yeah. Who, who are Haley Bieber's fans? Like what who is this pairing for? That's a great, great question. question. Because it's not like adult rich yoga ladies, is it? I don't it's like Instagram. People? Let's start I here. No idea. I'm just gonna bing Haley Bieber. Amelia said that I'm unclear Justin Bieber was in line in front of her and he was getting a Haley Bieber shake. <laughs> so <laughs> that's maybe he likes her a lot. Sure, yeah. <laughs> When you so got him as a fan, that's all you really need. Yeah, it's you know? true. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. Maybe Looking they around all big too. <laughs> 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 all right, she does have forty nine million followers on Instagram, so certainly a all notable right, right. person. Forty nine million. I'll be honest with you; that's, those are good numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you must be in the industry. I, mean, I, I didn't know. I couldn't tell. Oh, those are really those are, are really those good, good numbers? numbers. Those are good. Those are good. Uh, for, really? Okay. For socials, that's good. That's a good numbers. <laughs> I, I didn't know any of this. <laughs> so she's a model. Oh, she's Stephen <laughs> Stephen Baldwin's daughter. That's what? right. That's no. right. Yes. Isn't that wild? And then what? did ballet apparently. That's wild. Oh my god. Where is Stephen in the Baldwin verse? He he. Daniel's the the really well. Not there's the one who's killed somebody. So yeah, yeah Alex the, the murderer. Right? Um. Alex, Alex is the murderer. Alec, yes. Alec killed a woman with a gun. <laughs> Alec, sorry. Um, Alec, yeah. And then let's see, uh, Daniel. He's like the uber conservative one. I think that's actually Stephen. I think Stephen oh, is a Steven. conservative. Okay. I think Stephen's very Christian. Yeah. I think her dad is like the one sober. that played Tony Soprano, right? That sounds uh, in, right. In the uh, the movie that Moltisanti makes, and it doesn't. Oh, right. oh, that's yes, right. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so Stephen is the conservative one. So yeah, his daughter. His daughter. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. Anyway, she's uh, she's a celebrity and she has a smoothie at Erewhon that's too expensive. I think people will also get very defensive. They'll be like, she's really nice. I feel like there's like whenever I make fun of uh, like a reality person or like a star who's a star for no reason, people are always like, they're actually really nice. And I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. I don't know who the fuck they are. Yeah. I apologize. I she know. seems nice. Sure, she's yeah, so she's nice that she needs me to come to her defense. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she gets a cut of this smoothie? That's a great Great, Great question. question. Because it's so Great expensive, question. like eighteen dollars of food in that little cup is like it would have to be like truffles. You yes, know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. I have a hard time paying for anything that's like so that not understandable. Like 
she must get a cut or a licensing fee or a. Or at least, please, God, let some of the proceeds go to someone who right. need them for God's sake. It I, goes to a skin glazing charity. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Bang, the Bang Brothers skin glazing charity. <laughs> <laughs> and they're in a partnership with Fit Kids, why? <laughs> a post workout glaze. <laughs> Addressing it specifically to why. Well, you, you I saw this. that he followed the Fit Kids Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'll say this. Keep up the good work, boys. <laughs> I'm going to say this about the Fit Kids Instagram. Good numbers. Good, 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 numbers. Good, there's good, there's good, good Not good numbers. Not Bieber numbers, I'm <laughs> not, sure. Not Haley Bieber numbers, but good good numbers. Mitch, you got a chicken burrito and some, uh, with some other items. I got a chicken. Yeah, with some other items. Yeah. I got the chicken burrito. I thought the chicken burrito was tasty. You guys did not have it. I didn't share it. Um, I didn't want to share it. Well, you did take a bite of it. I took one bite. Yeah. And what you, you were you you said it was funny because this did happen. Yeah. Your sandwich came. I saw your sandwich, and I was like, I almost ordered that. And then you were like, We can go half and half on burrito and sandwich. And I was like, No. Yeah. I did not. So I I didn't I didn't want your sandwich. Yeah. I was very happy. One of everything that happens between us is projection from you. It's your issue that you're projecting onto me. I was just making fun of you. I you was, don't want to share something. I and shared then you it. I say still, that you don't like. I don't want to share. I something. still shared the Make burrito. Feel with you. better you about took a nice bite out of it. You liked yeah, it. Yeah, it was fine. Um, I thought it was. I thought it was decent. It was For, solid. It also had the benefit of. Dan, your burrito came cold, yeah. and then was heated up. We had to heat it up in the microwave because uh, it was a cold case item. This is one that they make. At the counter or whatever. Right. Oh, I didn't realize that in the order. Yeah, it's there. There's it's weird. There's some things that are like made hot and fresh, and other things that are not. And this it's kind of what, arbitrary. It feels like some yes. stuff's in cases and some stuff isn't. There's no reason why his burrito should not have been made. By, like it doesn't right. make any sense. I guess. But. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. What was yours? Yeah. Breakfast. Uh. Yeah. Steak and egg. Steak and egg. Yeah. It. Um. Uh. uh we looked through the menu, you know, to order, and right. there was nothing that I was like, I must have that. For sure. Um, That's a great was, point. It was all like, well, I, I'm curious what their version of a breakfast burrito tastes like, but I was not stoked on it. But the, the chicken was good. It was good. And what what, what are the uh, fixings on this? It's, it's very much a mush burrito. There's like chicken and rice, but would you say it's kind of like – just all kind of like mushed up, and I don't even. Re- it's like I'm just eating like a ricey chickeny. Yeah, bite. just kind of mushy, savory. The flavors were the flavors were okay though. That, it's a spinach wrap too, right? A spinach wrap, yeah. like a spinach tortilla, not not wrapped with a leaf of spinach. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yeah. yeah. No. I thought it, it was like very serviceable. It was. What's your go-to burrito order? My go-to burrito. Hmm, this is a great question because this great is also. Question. This depends on the place. Are you guys cactus fans? Yes. Cactus sure. is probably, I think, maybe the best. When they're on, sometimes they, they can yeah. be not like they they have they're like a McDonald's in some ways, mm-hmm. except not at all. But uh <laughs> but if you go if you get if you get if you get cactus and you get a California burrito from them mm. and the fries are hot, like f- like freshly cooked fries, and you get that with carne asada and sour cream and cheese. That's like one of my favorite. That's like my exact order. It's it's wow it's fucking wow. Great. We've gone yeah. from shopping buddies to cactus buddies. Woo. Wow. <laughs> Ca- what, what is do you, do you have another? What's your what are your what are your favorite burrito places out here? Else, cactus else, is good. I also I also just really like like a taco truck. Yeah, like I I find those to be more reliable than like a brick and mortar. Yeah, the, there's there's a, a taco truck near uh, the Roost. Mm-hmm. And that has has El Flamin, El Flamin. Right? El Flamin that place yeah. is yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one that's in the gas station? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. This is the kind of whole the whole issue with Erewhon is that it's like you can get a better burrito for literally half the price because these are what fifteen, sixteen dollars. Mm-hmm. They're also like there's an outrageous markup on these. Yeah, uh, some some Cactus of these are just sitting like in a cold eight, case, maybe nine you, bucks now. Yeah, you literally maybe. have the place from a bunch of different taquerias or taco trucks. You, it's just like there; it's readily available in the city. But this place exists for people who would never deign to shop at one of those. Mm-hmm. This is for again. This is the the kind of this is someone who's either doesn't do, do their own shopping or they're so rich that they would never think to you know. Uh, uh, fucking uh, hang out with the working class mm-hmm. and go to a place that sells like a proper burrito. So this is like, to, a, this get, is like a, when uh, one of the producers of The Simpsons, I should just say who it is because who cares? It was Richard Sakai. <laughs> and he, 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 he told Calpacus, he was like, will you fill up my tank? And Tim was like, sure. 
and he gave him two hundred dollars, <laughs> and Tim was like two hundred dollars. And this is like also back in the day. He's like, oh, this guy doesn't know how much right things cost. Right. There's no, there's like no, there, there, like he has no a hundred dollars would have been fine, but he like immediately like it's like oh, this guy is just like pulling into a service station and giving his card away. That's the same thing. With Air One, I think. A, I yeah. Think, and a good way to learn his assistant's been stealing $150 from him every time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was thinking Air One kind of feels like is like a uh, like a New York bodega, but mm. really high end. Where oh, it's like yeah, they sure. have the hot case, they have the little deli case, and then everything they have is kind of like random and specific, but you wouldn't go there for like full grocery shopping. You know, it's like. Yeah, right. You know, you get a bacon, egg, and cheese, you can, and there's someone there to cook whatever you want. But it's like a hard place to walk around in, and it's weird. You know? Yeah, on the way to Thirty Rock. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just, I was thinking. Remember, Cal Packus did a sketch about Jim Brooks. Yes, yeah, so this? this was with your sketch group, the Birthday he, Boys. He worked, I remember he, seeing this guy. He worked, he worked, he worked for Jim Brooks forever, and then like he finally quit that job, and then he wrote a sketch where like. He like I think he played Jim Brooks and he was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like he hated this guy so much for making it. He like once made him drive seventy minutes to his favorite frozen yogurt shop because yeah. a closer place would not suffice. It mm-hmm. had to be the place that he liked in oh Westwood, God. which is on the complete other side. And then of just saying like, I'm Jim Brooks. Yeah. I lie about my age, and I've actually seen my uh, my like assistant has seen my license. It was like <laughs> such fucking funny mean stuff. It was yeah. so fucking yeah. funny. Yeah. It was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hey, Amelia's got a sketch show later, actually. Do you want to check it out? <laughs> <laughs> this sketch is called My Two Wonderful Bosses. <laughs> wow. 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 I love wow. This show. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> so one has a problem not sharing. The other is... <laughs> I can't believe how much it bothers you. Okay, you're just full of shit. <laughs> just a fucking yeah, no liar. shit. You've known me for fucking o- <laughs> almost fifteen years or whatever. I'm full of shit. Yeah, you know this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the issue? You got some sushi too, Mitch. Mm. I thought I that sushi was the word I'll use is fine. I, I mean, mm. like, like I, I, I had higher expectations for it, and I've had some decent grocery store sushi, including from Erewhon, which I'll talk about. Not in this particular batch, but. Like uh, comparing this to like a, a sushi I'd get from like another grocery store chain, Sprouts, which is a much more affordable, you know, like I, I, I could get some, I get like, like a, a fucking eight piece from there for ha- again, half the price. That's mm. at the same level of quality. It's just like a little bit less sleek of a presentation. I should say the actual name of this sushi, yeah. right? It was the uh, spicy salmon crispy onion roll. Yes. Sounds good. Spicy salmon crispy onion roll. Also a thing where this is, and it just sort of speaks to what this place does of like they have, their soy sauce is like a tamari sauce, which is like a soy-free mm. soy sauce. Mm-hmm. It's just like everything mm. is a little bit, and you know what, I don't mind a tamari sauce, it's fine. Do but you want I me mean, to redo the ingredients in this? Yeah, sure, go for it. You got uh, organic cucumber, mm-hmm. org of avocado, mm-hmm. wild salmon, ginger, wasabi, nori, crispy onion, org brown white rice. What is brown white rice? <laughs> is that, a, what is that? I think probably they just mean brown and white rice. Oh, all right. Um, org sesame oil. S- Are you choosing to shorten org because you've said organic <laughs> once? Yeah. Or are to- <laughs> Sauce org sriracha chili oil lacanto. I don't know what that is, and probably saying it wrong. Org veganaise org teriyaki. So very like like we're ma- we're sa- telling you that like a lot of this is organic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. It was fine. I like I said, like if this was from Ralph's sushi case or something, I wouldn't have if I ate that and like this is from Ralph's, I'd be like, Oh, it's pretty yeah, good. This is fine, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Like I don't think it was bad. No, it was mm-hmm. fine. It was fine. It's what, just you're paying a premium for it, which you either do or don't notice, depending on how much you know, what your what your income is. And uh, and but part of the premium you're paying is for all those organic ingredients, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of, at some level, I kind of get it. 
Because, like, if you're getting a grocery store rotisserie chicken, like, part of the reason that's five ninety nine is because that bird had a fucking awful life and was pu- <laughs> pumped full of a bunch of, you know, antibiotics and shit and was just, mm-hmm. like, chemically fattened as fast as possible. Uh, and it, it's, it's a low-quality factory farm piece of poultry. Like, I kind of understand that on some level. You're paying a premium for the better, better ingredients, but it's not always reflected in the taste at this place. I agree. Yeah. I also, like, I don't trust that. Yeah, like, sure. like I, I thought it was like so juicy when that stuff came out about squirrel. You remember that? Because mm. I always didn't like that place. Yeah, squirrel. it was funny. Uh, squirrel was a for for people who aren't in LA and maybe I don't know if this scandal went nationwide, but there's it's like this local place that does like a they have like fancy toasts and shit. Like it's like a fancy breakfast slash brunch place. Always drew law a long line. Squirrel is spelled S Q R L. That's one of the worst twee. parts about it. And they had <laughs> it sucks. it's it's a it's obnoxious, but they had and they have there's a celebrity chef behind it, and then it came out that basically a bunch of the jams that they were making in house were just like covered with mold and bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. Moby is a part owner, right? Wasn't Moby? Is he? I think Moby owned. Uh, part Moby of was it. a part owner of that other place, Little Tree. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. um, but maybe also Squirrel. I don't know. I don't know if he had. I don't know if he had anything to do with Squirrel. But Everyone I'm... that worked there had to look like him. <laughs> 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 they waxed everybody head to toe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I I think that I get the premium. But like you're saying, I think Sprouts is mostly organic, and I know they don't yeah. have as much. But they have a, like a little hot bar, and they have sandwiches. Yeah. I and love I, I, I like love Sprouts. much yeah. prefer that experience because Erwan, I like feel it inside of me. Like I am in a class war with that place, even 100%, though I'm yeah. like solidly like not like whatever middle class, yeah. Or whatever. But I, I feel uh, insulted by its existence, yeah. and I'm mad at it. Yeah. So it has to taste really good for me to be okay with it. And it doesn't. Yes. It's a th- it's it's very much a thing in my head of like when I was a kid and I got sent to private school for a year, like. It's that vibe where, like, I never felt like I fit in. I don't like these types of people. Mm-hmm. Not that they're, everyone who shops there is bad. There's plenty of nice people who shop at Erewhon. I don't know. But they, there is something where it's just, like, you feel like an outsider being there, and it, it's a shitty feeling to have at a at a grocery store. Yeah, it feels know? like a country club. Or yes, something. Like, for sure. Like, oh, and there's too fancy. And there's a lot of feelings like that out in L.A. already. So it's like, why subject yourself to this at this place? Mm-hmm. When, like, are you really getting food that makes a big difference? And as far as, like, the hot food, it's okay, but I would rather eat a ca- uh, cactus taqueria. I'd like, yeah. it's a much better burrito. Or just even in this class, you know, you talked about sprouts or, like, whole foods. Like, I don't love whole foods, but, like, I could spend a lot less money at their hot bar just even just shopping for groceries at a mm-hmm. Whole Foods or a Whole Foods 365. And there's also an aspect of just, like, why do we need a more expensive Whole Foods? Like, is that what the market needed? Is that where we are where it's just like, hey, uh, there's actually people with so much disposable income that there needs to be like an even more exclusive grocery store. We need something like like Bristol Farms will not do. We need to go fancier than fucking Bristol Farms. This needs to be the fanciest, most high-end grocery store there is. And you know what? That's probably not even the the fucking ceiling. There'll probably be something that, that usurps it eventually. So yeah, from that standpoint, yes, what you're talking about in terms of class war, it does... It does enrage one slightly to see a place that's so specifically catered towards Tesla liberals. And <laughs> it's a and it feels grim. And it, it's it's also just ties into our dumb fucking like the class war, but then also the culture war, because it's also like this is specific. This is the place for rich liberals. Like it's like mm-hmm. you. this isn't the this is not the place where a, a rich conservative is going to shop. That's probably they have their own fucking grocery store. We don't know mm-hmm. about. Um, it's just uh, I don't know, man. The parts of it depress me, but I do like some of the food. And that's the whole. My whole conflict with this place. Part yep. of it. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say parts of it depressed me, but uh, it is now. I made it my Instacart spot. I let <laughs> my, uh, my settings. And you're not tipping on this one. No, there's no tips will be had. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's fancier. They don't need the tip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't work there. Oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> One thing I also don't like about these fancy places, like I get really frustrated when I go to Whole Foods. Their fresh food is really good. Yeah. But all of their stuff on the like rack or whatever that's their own brand or like this off brand stuff is like way worse. Like I tried to buy ketchup at, at uh, Whole Foods 365 and they only have like organic ketchup that tastes like barbecue ketchup yes. crap. And right. it's like, mm. and it's the only option they have. And I find that at a lot of those places, like, all they have is like weird chips. Like they don't have ruffles. They no just regular have like, chips. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, this store is actually way worse except for the hot fresh food. You know, like yes. that stuff is good. But the rest of the store I feel like is like, 
I'm paying higher prices for worse quality food. Yeah, don't make me have to stop at Ralph's for my Doritos on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Like, let yeah. me I just grab those while I'm here. Right. <laughs> they even have their own, like, brand of, like, frozen crap that's, like, you know, pigs in a blanket, but it's, like, bad somehow. Yeah. It's like, how do you mess that up? That's kind of my thing with – I like Trader Joe's, too, but I want – like, I do want brand stuff. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I wish – Trader Joe's have brand stuff. It's a good. It, it, that's yeah. A, it's. I mean, it, Trader Joe's fine. by compar comparison to Erewhon is fucking rules. Also, in a completely different price category, but yes. also Trader Joe's does have the exact same problem. Of it's just like limited. They're sort of like like oh, they don't right. have vanilla extract. That's another stop. Like if yeah. you know, whatever, I need some specific yeah. ingredients. They well, don't have all cardamom. their produce is weird. All their something. produce is kind of weird. And like yeah, they have they have a Cheetos approximation, but it's not. It's like their cheese crunchies or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and they're like. Kind of good, but they're not the same. So yeah, that that's that is a thing with. I I, I don't know, but it's 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 exacerbated. It's an extreme version of Erewhon. It's like a much more heightened version of. Yeah, it. it's yeah. The, it's it's like all the bird, right? Isn't the branding always the bird? Joe, like Joe, isn't that's what my 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 mom was talking about? These other like Joey Joey O's or right? What, isn't there? Is, oh sure, is oh, the yeah. bird Joe? Is is is? I Joe didn't know the, there was a bird. The bird is Joe. I think the bird is the Trader Joe. Joe's bird is Joe. I think it is Joe. Is I didn't it? know that. I don't know uh, that. I, I don't. I didn't even know there was a bird. There's a, like, like a, a like toucan a toucan. Like a something. toucan. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And that it will be like his like his cheesy turds are fucking Cheetos. You know what I mean? Like right. that's what it is. Is that what they're saying? <laughs> that's kind of what it is. <laughs> like everything there has is out of the bird's body <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <else>. Regurgitated. <laughs> or... <laughs> Everyone shopping at, at Trader Joe's is a baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> this orange juice was dispensed from a cloaca. <laughs> think about that. Pulpy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, what, what other food? I, I feel like there's food we didn't Buffalo talk about. Buffalo cauliflower. Buffalo cauliflower. That was pretty good. It was, was good. good. Would have liked some, a little bit more crunch on it, but it was pretty decent. Good but flavor. I think like you were saying, I think it was maybe baked. And I think I was it was like, baked, yeah. All right. Pretty good for baked uh, buffalo cauliflower. I don't Amelia think there's a place with a deep fryer. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 General Sal's chicken. That's right. Sal, S-A-L, which it was interesting. It was very good. I thought all the things that were like freshly made were good like that. Also, yeah. it's funny just be like, you're like, you know, you're fighting a battle. I don't know why I'm talking about fighting battle so much. Uh -huh. But it's like, you're like it's our General Sal. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm the gen that's, that's, it doesn't work. Right, right. General Sal's is cool. Yeah. General Sal yeah. sucks. And I, like you were saying, I, like, I guess it is like that is a, an American like I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Possibly American General Sows. Yeah, Ameri I think so. I think that dish is American in origin. Yeah. A lot of American Chinese food. Feels like a question for Gabrus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I thought it was good. I thought General Sal was yeah, he was I liked he it. was decent. I liked it. Yeah, it, it was like fine. It it just all gave me the feeling of like school lunch of the week they're trying to be healthy. Mm, interesting. That's that it, it that's the burrito gave me, it was like, oh, if this was at a college campus, I would like this. But like food at a college campus is a lot of the times like sh sucks. Yeah. It's like, it's like a tier maybe above high school cafeteria food, like, but very close to it. It's almost the same feeling. Like you're saying like a healthy. That's, that healthy was week. my experience of it. I, I like, yeah. I'm so happy you guys paid because I think if I paid for this, I would be like spitting mad yeah. about the quality of the food. <laughs> well, so yeah. I was like, yeah, this free meal was not great for me, but uh, uh, no, yeah, I think that it was, that chicken was like, I think if I had made my own at home from like a microwavable General Sos mm -hmm. chicken, I would have enjoyed it more than that. It tasted yeah. like something I enjoy from Panda Express. Did it? You know, like, yeah. it was fine. Yeah. yeah. But I would rather have panda, I think. You know what I don't love? This is weird, but I don't like a green tortilla. Yeah. And the that tortillas was, that was, were all yeah. green, and yeah. I'm like, this is kind of unappetizing for yeah. me. Yeah. I also I come from why. a house where my dad would tr throw away moldy pieces of bread and then, like, That's try good. to keep the bread. And so, like, so often I'd be like, oh, I just ate mold because, he <laughs> like, he was like, all right, took I took care of the issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be, so, like. A green tortilla specifically for me is I'm like, it looks like mold. Mm -hmm. I don't want to eat the moldy tortilla. Yeah. How um my, my dad did the same thing. He didn't he just would scrape it off or like cut it out of the bread. How is it a Fucking... dad thing that bread is is toasted to hell? Like <laughs> oh, yeah. was your bread like like crispy toasted? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it what would, it would be too. it would be like like right before it was like just completely burnt. <laughs> it was like very you gotta take the knife to it and wipe off. So like. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also wonder, think you know yeah. what I you know what I think too. 
I think this is also just, I think toasters are bad. I don't think we've made a good toaster. You know, <laughs> I heard you talking about how you like toast with butter mm -hmm. cut up. Uh, do you have a toaster oven? I do not have a toaster uh, oven. It changes everything because you can put the butter on and put the toast in and decide the level of toasting so it melts immediately onto there. You're not mm. scraping a hard butter onto a hot toast. This might be the, my mom and I were just, my mom was here for a full week. Uh, it was great, Wags. We, uh, we had a blast. Mm -hmm. But we were toasting, we were eating breakfast every day. And uh, in bed, <laughs> <laughs> who brought it to who? <laughs> Did you have a little train? <laughs> now, see if, if like, just just to say this, like, if like I make fun of you for not sharing, uh. and if my reaction to you saying we had, I was like, come on, <laughs> we didn't have breakfast in bed, <laughs> like that would seem weird, <laughs> right? This is a thing we have a playful, ba an existing playful banter about. I know, but I'm this saying is a whole to thing you, you fucking invented. I, I know, but I'm saying to you, like when you like doth protest too uh -huh. much. Is like when you get upset about sharing, which I don't, I think you're generous. Yes. But if I did that with my mom, it was like, we were not in bed together. People would be like, they definitely were in bed together. Yeah. <laughs> now I think you were. I was not in bed with my mom. <laughs> a lot of the times I give her the bed. Mm, sure. And I sleep at the foot like a dog. <laughs> um, uh, no, she, she, I, I try to give her my bed this, and she wanted, she was like, I'm going to sleep in the, she wanted to sleep on the blow up mattress. She wouldn't take my bed. That's nice. Uh, but we solved that. We got a sleep, we got a sleeper couch. Oh, there you go. So now she's, uh, she's going to sleep on the couch whenever yeah. she comes out here. Yeah. Um, but, but, uh, anyways, we were making breakfast a lot, and, and we were, and my mom was like, toasters suck. My mom was like, toasters have always been bad. I think she's right. I think toasters aren't good. I think a toaster oven is maybe what I should invest in. I don't. I don't know. If there's a good toaster. Hmm. I, I I have a combo toaster oven air fryer. Uh, Interesting. And it 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 kind of helps with a lot of things because you can like quick cook some tater tots, yeah. or you can put a little toast in there with cheese on it, and the cheese melts right onto it. Uh, it's a good like low stakes toast. That's what I get. I get invest in one of these. Are you you're a toaster man, right? I have a. I just have a straight up toaster. I my toaster's toaster been okay, but I will say that I I reached a point where my previous toaster just broke, and I was like, how do you? I was like trying like so like so hard to like fix this toaster and like figure out a place to repair a toaster. Careful. And Remember everything. What happened to Homer? Yeah, and then. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the the time traveling yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> you're worried he's gonna get shot back in time. Yeah, I think he might get shot back in time. <laughs> it's like I I, I was talking with with one of Natalie's relatives about like she uh, she repairs like sewing machines. She works with like old sewing machines. She's basically like any sewing machine that's made modern. Uh, made contemporarily is like made with a bunch of plastic components and it's not even worth repairing. Like old, mm. like pre, like sewing machines pre 1970 were made like with a bunch of metal components and like you could go, like they could last forever if you maintain them. And now everything's so fucking cheap. And it's the same thing with toasters. Like I was looking around, it's like there's just no way to, to repair this. There's no place that's going to repair this. It's cheaper for me to just buy a new toaster and throw this one in the fucking garbage. It felt so profoundly wasteful, but that's just everything in our society, right? So like, anyway, so I got the, like that toaster worked great for a while. While, then it eventually broke. I, I got a new one. Toaster's working pretty well for me. And as far as the butter thing, I keep my butter, butter in a, a dish on the counter. And you know what? It's fine. Do you, you cover it? Yeah, I cover it. Yeah. I get a little butter dish. I got a butter, butter dish too. I like, I like that room temperature butter. Yeah. If you were to travel back in time, I feel like you would go to the Weiger residence <laughs> in 1979 and be like, don't do it. <laughs> and then your mom and dad would just be like, they would just nod. <laughs> Prevent my own birth. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing. <laughs> He just disappeared. Yeah, in the room. A big smile on his face fades away. <laughs> Ugh, that's one of the darkest things I've ever heard. <laughs> Going back to prevent your own birth. <laughs> I don't want you to kill me. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to Doughboys. I'm Mike Mitchell here with my co-host Matt Kowalik. Like, oh, <laughs> show still exists. <laughs> that happened quick. We're yeah. in a cardboard box, <laughs> talking into bananas. <laughs> so why could ever being born means podcast never like microphones start to invent Wallach and I went crazy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, look, we got to get to our final thoughts on Erewhon. Here's what we'll do. We'll take a break. We'll be wow. back with more Doughboys and our Fork Scores right after this. Hey, Mitch. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. 
Well, like, turkey's great on sandwiches. I love it on there. But hey, we're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or your annoying auntie. That's hey, right. Do it this way. And like, shut up. Shut up. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic and uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? That's right, Wags. Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural, and instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air, and instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. Uh, Hey, I wasn't sure what to expect with Fume, but I gotta say, it's well-weighted, it's perfectly balanced, it's fun to fidget with, and, you know and the real wood is beautiful and it's got a great shape to it. Why? Because it looks nice. Looks it, nice. It looks nice as hell. And you know what? No more listen to auntie. You don't got to listen to auntie's advice. You don't got to listen to the Hollywood boy. You don't have to listen to your crazy neighbor. Mm-hmm. None of those people who are always talking your ear off with their wild theories. No, you can use fume. And why stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code DOUGHBOYS to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code DOUGHBOYS to save an additional 10% off your order today. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. Mitch, you take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Yeah, that's right, Wags. I gave AG1 a try because, you know, I want a better gut health. That's right. And another thing, I was always getting sick. Really? So you're feeling better now? I'm feeling better, Wags. I wanted to have my immune system boosted, and that's what I get with AG1. I take AG1 in the morning. Before I go out, I just get a big glass of water. I mix in a scoop of AG1, or sometimes I put it in my Greek yogurt smoothie. I drink it down, and it makes me feel invincible. I'm ready to go for the day. I got everything I need. Wow. It's hard to keep up with a supplement routine that comes with a bunch of different products. AG1 makes that so much easier. Wags, very quickly, I noticed that it helps me with improved digestion. I am not a guy who is regular, as they say, and it got things moving. Why take a bunch of different things when you can mix just one scoop of powder and water once a day? AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. AG1 is powerful because it's so easy to fit into your lifestyle. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010, and AG1 gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that give major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. Wow. AG1 is delivered every month, so it's super easy to make it a daily habit. With AG1, taking good care of my body each day is really that simple. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. That's athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. Check it out. Welcome back to Doughboys. It's time for our final thoughts on Erewhon. So Dan, Ryan, here's how this will work. We'll each go down the line, uh, give our final thoughts, if you will, a closing argument. and I then again, Sorry. What? I opened the can. I just. That's okay. Okay, sorry. All right, go ahead. I mean, that's like, hey, Emma, you probably could have edited that out if he hadn't spoken over it, right? Yep. Yeah, Emma's nodding. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I, sorry. Was my, I was talking to my <laughs> mic and you did it over there by your mic. She probably could just <laughs> duck your mic, would have been fine. I just want to, if someone heard, I want them to know it was a can. Opening. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Go but ahead. yeah, Emma could have covered it. Uh, so uh, th- we're each going <laughs> to give our closing arguments on this chain and then give it a score from zero to five forks. Uh, Dan, seated to my left, uh, we'll begin with you. Um, yeah, I. I uh, you can probably tell from the way I've been talking about it, but I, I don't think there was anything I ate that I would order again. Wow. 
maybe wow. the drink we had, the pineapple drink. But Pretty good drink. It's a good drink. For the price, I would probably just overpay for one at like Juice or Joe and the Juice or one of those places. Yeah, where the Trader it's Joe's least... Juice Place. <laughs> 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 yeah. Which is, uh, I guess, Toucan Piss? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Orangey Toucan Piss. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, I, yeah, I, I don't really like what the place represents. Not that I'm like some big class warrior. Sure. Um, and uh, I didn't really like any of the food, so I would say one star. One fork. Wow. One wow. fork. I'm sorry. No, one wow. star equals one fork. That's wow. That's easy no, math for I should have said one fork. No, you're fine. <laughs> no, I, I should have said one fork, Nick. Do you, you right. want to take it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Hey, Emma, <laughs> if, if Dan just says like one fork instead of one star, if he just says one fork, you can just like fix that, right, and post? Yeah. Okay, yeah, she's nodding. She said well, yeah. I want to, but Mitch is about to open a big soda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I have a lineup of cans. <laughs> that is a big soda. <laughs> My old wow. 80 ouncer that I uh, <laughs> say for the end of the show. One fork. One fork, yeah. Uh, Ryan, your thoughts, your fork score. You know, I... I think some of what I didn't like about it could have been due to my own ordering. I think Mm. if I would have gone in on my own and gotten like just the one or two things that I really liked, uh, I would be pretty happy taste wise and food wise, but I do feel uncomfortable at that place and with the vibe. So I I would give it three forks. Three forks. Wow. Yeah. All right. Smooth man. What do you think? I'm in kind of the same area as you guys. I, uh, I, I should just, I agree with with Lippert that this is this was the sip of the trip here, Wags. This uh, this pineapple dream. But again, eleven dollars is pretty pricey. I mean, I guess in the juice world, not even that crazy. But the markup on almost every other item is 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 pretty wild. Uh, juice is maybe the place where they kind of do a, a decent job. Yeah. Um, the burrito was decent. Uh, we had we had the good gut shot. We didn't talk about. Oh, we didn't talk about the gut shot. It tasted like. Gasoline. We, it was it, it, it was way too big of a shot. Yes. It was a big. It was a huge shot, and we split it up between the four of us. So so all of us got a little taste, and it tasted like shit. Right? It like was bad. I did love it. How are your guts intense. feeling right now, though? Not great. Okay. So it's, it's the good gut shot. My gut feels like fine. I guess I, I, there was a lot of uh, other Irwan bullshit that I ate, but I, I my guts feel as gross as they normally do. Um, the spicy salmon roll okay, was okay. The Haley Bieber strawberry glaze skin smoothie, it was all right. I don't know overall wise. Like maybe the cakes were some of them. Actually, the the buffalo cauliflower was probably my favorite mm-hmm. food item. Um, I don't know if I'll ever. Eat, I'm almost positive I'll never eat at this this food market ever again. At the hot bar at, yeah. at Erewhon ever again. I may never st- step foot in an Erewhon. I've never been in one. They don't seem really convenient, right? They kind of feel like- Depends on where you live. Yeah, they seem yeah. out of the way. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go I'm gonna go two and a half forks. That's it for yeah. me. It, it, they may not be convenient to you, Mitch. There are, they are cloistered in neighborhoods that tend to be very well off. So yeah. it's like it's you know there's there's a Beverly Hills one, there's one in uh, Look, up in Calabasas. Uh, there's a different timeline yeah. for me where like I was a fit kid and I like kept on that track. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I just like kept going in that world and I'm an Erewhon guy now. I'm in a fit adult club mm-hmm. or whatever. But that didn't happen. That's not the road I took. No. And I don't fucking I don't I don't like it. it I, the price point is bad. You make like workout mindset videos on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a what's his name Billy Blanks? If I became a Billy Blanks guy, I took a Taibo class with Billy Blanks. Wow! Really? Yeah, he taught the ones at UCLA, and I was out here for a summer theater camp, and he taught Whoa. one that I was in. Was I, it? I couldn't get through it. It was really difficult. That's Taibo amazing. Was really hard. Was he nice? He, all business. <laughs> you know what? A lot of punches. I okay. respect that. I no, like he that. beat the shit out of me. <laughs> 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 wow. But that's what you gotta expect when you're in Billy's type of. Oh yeah. That that's what that is wow, with the man himself. Yeah. Uh yeah, just a different world, I guess, that I'm not a part of. And uh yeah, two two and a half, four. I mean, whatever, it's fine. But I don't I, just even the descriptions of I, I gotta go and do an Aramon. That's I so I guess I get a partially incomplete. Because I think I'm the only one who's never stepped foot in an Erewhon before. 
Yeah, I mean, I've look, I've been in Erewhon a, a few times. I definitely had st- like some of the biggest sticker shock of my life the first time I went in one when there were one, there was one that was newly opened where, near where I used to live, uh, the Santa Monica location, and I went in there and it was just like I cannot believe how expensive like you know. Uh, whatever like butter is like this is just the, this is truly wild but you know what some of the stuff i don't mind um i've had some discussions with a friend of the show you know the, the dumbbells host ryan stanger who's super duper conscious about what he puts in his body a very a, a, you know a health conscious dude and like he's kind of been like look it's fucking expensive but erwan has some decent stuff if you're really trying to be mindful about what you're eating so i think it does have it's value from that standpoint. I'm going to say this, Mitch, and this is new to you, and we'll see what your reaction is. Before that text thread came out that Amelia was putting in an order for Erewhon, I was like, okay, I got to get Erewhon for the show. So I actually went for dinner last night. Wow, this is fucked. Wow, the, everything is <laughs> different now. The, everything and is very <laughs> different now. I asked Natalie, I was like, would you, would you be all right if I got dinner from Erewhon? She was like, sure. And so I went and I got a couple of things. I got a combo plate uh, for her with lamb, broccolini, and sweet potato, and then one for me with a salmon filet, Meyer lemon salad, and spaghetti squash. So this is akin to like a tender greens combo plate. You right. know, you get a a protein, a starch, and... A, uh, a and a green vegetable. Do you guys feel kind of betrayed like I do, or? And so, yeah, we shared. <laughs> we shared the vegetables. Had our own proteins. I'd uh-huh. say the salmon fillet was like under seasoned and a little overcooked, but it was fine. But again, these were just both very uh, like like quite uh, quite expensive, especially versus like a tender greens. I got some wild tuna roll sushi, which was better than the sushi we had today, Mitch. Uh, and it, but it's also a lot simpler. But I was like, this is pretty decent, and honestly, probably the best value of anything I got there at twelve ninety nine for like twelve pieces. Uh, I, we got some raw strawberry pie, super duper buttery because it was like raw and sugar free. So they think they were trying to do something to overcompensate for that. And that David did give it a little bit of flavor, but uh, it just uh, it just was a, was a very oily bite. Uh, and also the hardcore greens drink, which I don't love that name, but no. it what did live up to it was like super duper acidic and uh, and you know just like just potent green flavor. Um, but uh, but it was uh, probably, again, a highlight, a pretty decent juice. I also got a breakfast burrito, which I had this morning, Mitch. And I will say the heating ins- the heating instructions. I asked you if you ate breakfast this morning. You said yes. <laughs> I did, yeah. I and breakfast. little did I know, it was Erewhon. <laughs> yeah, at Erewhon. I was going to tell you on the show. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay? This was a veggie breakfast I, I'm, burrito. I'm fine. I feel bad for Natalie, who probably didn't get to share any of this with him. A uh, veggie <laughs> breakfast burrito. We shared all of it. Veggie <laughs> breakfast burrito. The heating instructions did not work. They said to heat it in the oven, a conventional oven at 350 for 15 minutes. I did exactly that. It was cold in the middle. I had to microwave it. Uh, it this was fine. A little bit of a dry guy. Again, I had to, to, to just throw some like ketchup packets and some salsa on it just to give it a little bit of moisture. Uh, but you know, this was all decent stuff. I think where I land. So you spent like another five hundred dollars yeah. at year one. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> outrageously <laughs> expensive. Um, I think where I land, having had basically three meals in a row there, is where uh, where Rosenberg is, which is that I think this is a three fork chain. It it's too expensive. It's inconsistent. It's maybe not for me, uh, except for in a limited number of situations, like with the juice or like I get a fucking latte from their bar and maybe I'd get like a sweet treat or something like some sort of vegan uh, vegan dessert. But like or some berries like I talked about earlier. But for the most part, like this is not for me. Uh, and everyone should I, play back the video where Nick gestured to Ryan and said I could go with the Jews or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> With the juice? Said, yeah. <laughs> the juice? What? <laughs> no, I wasn't saying anything juice, anti-Semitic. Juice, 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 <laughs> juice. Oh, juice. Yeah, I sure, leaned on juice. Sure, sure. <laughs> Again, doth protest too much. I would never say anything like that. Seems like Good you maybe God. did. I was so thrown. <laughs> I didn't take it that way. I just... Here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty cool with it. You're just rolling with it. I, I think thought that... he thought I was juice. I don't know. <laughs> I think this is a three fork chain. Uh, I think it like does what it's trying to do. 
I don't think it exceed excels. Like I don't think it, it like it, it. It's like like oh wow, this is so notable that you know what it costs a lot of money, but you really should go out of your way to go there. I think it's like it, it's fine. It's a fucking high end grocery store, and it does that at a degree of competency. And to me, that's a three forker. Do you know where I would just I went to McCall's with my mom? Yes, and McCall's is great. Also, like slightly expensive, but like a great local meat market, basically. Uh, relax. Actual beef cuts. Okay. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> you're mad today. I'm angry today. Hey, why? <laughs> I don't know. You're pissing me off. <laughs> you didn't sleep well last night. You're cranky. Yeah, cranky. Uh, but I'm like, oh, I could see how like Irwan was something like a McCall, which now McCall's is is becoming a, like a chain. Do you know this? I didn't know that. McCall's they're like having more locations, and I'm like, oh, you can see this like. Become twisted and not what it originally was, and and you know just be a high priced food market. I could see that happen with Irwan, but just something that I don't really care to ever have again. I guess I don't know. I like I don't Whole Foods is too much for me. I like I don't like to even go to Whole Foods. So so this is not anything that's that that I like. What's going on over there? You're in deep thought. No, I'm thinking. Because I'm not gonna, I, like, I don't want to, I, I don't want to say firmly, like, like, oh, I'll never go here again. Because I think there are, situationally, I think there are some things I would get from sure. this place. And there's a level of like cravenness about this place from its from a business standpoint that I do kind of admire the the fucking, you know, it, 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 just how brazen it is, how craven it is for them to be like, hey, here's a thirty dollar jar of bone broth. Like this thing that a Vietnamese grandma could make for seventeen cents, we're going to charge a three thousand percent like upcharge on it just to just because you know rich people will afford to pay, can afford and, pay for and it. not as good and not yeah. as good yeah. It's so, like, like a luxury car brand. Where yeah, one hundred percent. It's too much. It yes. drives just like other cars, but it looks nice. That's part it? of the marketing of yeah. it is that we know it costs more, and that 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 means it's exclusive for you. I think I'd be yeah. okay with it if the stuff. I, I'm not okay with it. I'd be more okay with it if the stuff. Tasted great. And none of it like tastes great to me. Yeah, like that salmon. Am I wrong? If, no, like, if that salmon was like better seasoned, that salmon fillet that I had, like better seasoned, and like if those vegetables were like, wow, these are really hitting. Like the spaghetti squash was good, but nothing was like mind blowing. Mm-hmm. I feel like that like everything needs to be needs to really excel to justify this cost. Do you like tender greens? You you can, I do like tender greens. I, I think, think they do a great fine. job. Yeah. Flavorful, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would much like, rather have a plate from tender greens than from yeah. fucking Arowan. Yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, well, look, th- that was our review of Erewhon. Wow. It's time for a segment. Wow. Mitch. Can I say something quick? Yeah. Billy Blanks, this is embarrassing for me. He was a former fit kid. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Like, like to just show you, like. That was, those are the paths. Those are the paths <laughs> you could take. Yeah. Same, same class as you? Same, like? Yeah, same class. <laughs> class of uh, 94, I believe. Mm-hmm. He and I were both fit kids. He was Billy Blanks and you were shooting Blanks. <laughs> <laughs> That was his nickname. <laughs> Already, by the way, yeah. at 12 years, 11, or, 11 or 12 years old. We yeah. can tell. Like, oh, fuck, you know, oh, that load, you can tell it looks yeah, dead. That load just looks fucking <laughs> dead. Pretty empty load. No oh. Master Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very close to the time where I learned how to jerk off for my friends on the trip to Washington, D.C. Mm. I don't know if you guys, did you have that experience where your friends taught you how to jerk off? No. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this is a food show. <laughs> I had a wild roller coaster. This is was... the presidential jerk off test. <laughs> <laughs> the presidential jerk off test. Bill Clinton oversees it. Uh, uh, you jack off onto a blue dress. Um, I, 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 like, I was in a trip to Washington, D.C. This is the truth. In seventh grade, I think it was. And my friends were like talking about jacking off, and I had never done it. And they were like telling me how it worked, like like you know they they were saying how they did. I didn't know. I didn't. Uh-huh. I, it was my fir- like first time hearing like my friends talk about. It. So I did. Wags, well, as you know, I went home. I there was a newscaster on Channel Seven News, WHDH, who I like thought was attractive. I went to the tub. I laid down with some baby shampoo and I jacked off for the first time. So and- hang on, you saw her. 
got the image in your head and then yes. went to the tub and then you went, didn't want to do it in the room because you were sharing the room because uh, yeah I, well no no i wasn't sharing the room i just i, I was like i'm gonna do it, it in the shower the what, how, what 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 part of this was, though was your invention like what part was like okay i'm gonna the these guys have taught me how to jack off i'm gonna do what they told me and what part was like because like lying down in the tub that wasn't part of their instructions <laughs> no i don't right? think that was part of the instructions also okay. as these guys don't know as the first time I ever masturbated, my dad came into the shower. He he, <laughs> went, he was step as I was what, choose your word carefully. There, yeah. Yeah. As I was coming, my dad's foot was coming down onto my like was about, oh, he was really? about to step on me. Yeah. Oh your, my god! Your first load was shooting out, and like the Monty Python opening. Of the gas <laughs> yeah. towards your face. To me, this tells me everything about you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, there's the formative moment. That's the day I became a comedian. <laughs> My dad was like, that looks like a dead load. <laughs> I've heard of Billy name Blanks, for this? Shoot- <laughs> uh, do, do you have, wait, but baby shampoo, though. You, that, was, that couldn't have been your go-to. That must that have was, torn my dad, you up. My dad used baby shampoo forever. But I mean, for like, I do wonder. <laughs> off. Yeah, that's, yeah. I do wonder if there's like a correlation between like maybe baby shampoo. I use it too much. My dick, you know, that's why it like explains my dick size. <laughs> it just became so soft <laughs> that there was never any reason to go. <laughs> Uh, um, you but, were also inspired by the no tears thing. You were like, oh, I could do this without tears. <laughs> 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 but that was, I, I asked my, I later, Weiger knows this, but I later was like, hey, what was going on? I was like in the shower and he, was, and he, and he told me this is the worst part. Well, not the worst part of it, but he's like, oh, I thought your mom was in there. That's what he said to me. Oh, Which is no. like also like, ugh. <laughs> right. Fucking <laughs> sucks. So he was gonna step on your mom? <laughs> <laughs> I he was I mean, he was like, oh, when he said like, he was about to but... step on me. Like like he, he was like, oh, this is you know, like uh a... oh, look at Jack and off in here. <laughs> <laughs> and no lock in that bathroom. No. A door? So this is a part of your whole like <laughs> pathology with bathrooms. There's no locks in any of my doors in my Yeah, that's my a whole really? thing. Yeah. By but, choice or just by? But I mean, my mom. I mean, it's just an old. It's like you know, like an old house. Yeah, yeah. it was like a, like you know, probably a hundred years old now or so. I don't know, somewhere in there. And and uh and so like the door, like they would just walk in all the time. My parents would walk in all the time. Feels like knocking has to become a priority in a house with no locks. One hundred percent. You would think that. You would think that would become a thing, but it did. It did not become a thing. Why yeah. the bathtub? I don't know. I think maybe one of my friends did it in the shower or something like that. I think that was a part of it. But then but the lying cra- down in the bathtub? Yeah, fully flat. I'm lazy. What I don't know. What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, I was fully flat. I was like kind of rested backwards. Okay. Like kind of like you know like tub. You yeah, know, yeah, A little yeah. bit like a tub situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was pretty low. I sank <laughs> as I you know as things started going. I don't know how in detail I should get about this, but. So you want more I details? Think, no, I think you told us pretty much everything. <laughs> How much more detail you get into? Are there any more details? Yeah. <laughs> but then also, did, did you have this experience of like later? Like I told, I was like, I jack off. I like told other kids, and other kids were like, that's fucking gross. Like some kids thought it was gross. Mm, I never yeah. talked about it Mm-mm. with my friends. Like it never came up. That's probably the smarter route. I, maybe it was, but now I talk about it like uh, on things that exist for all eternity, like right. podcasts and stuff. It's like what's better? <laughs> <laughs> I was like pent up. I, I, the first time I ever came, I didn't really know I was jerking off, and yeah. I was just laying down and being twelve. But Celebrity Deathmatch was on. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Let's so, get it on. Like, yeah, Clay- <laughs> <laughs> listen, you really listen to those directions. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. I had a wet. My first time, I had a wet dream. <laughs> I was, so there had been this uh, girl that I'd like been on dates with that I didn't realize I was going on dates with in high school. She'd just been like, we should just go hang out. And I was like, okay, cool. And like, we just like to drive around and stuff and like hang out. And then, so I had a dream uh, and I was just at a park, public park. And there was a dude playing sousaphone. Like one of those like big, <laughs> tr- to like tubas you put on, you wear. And he's like, boom, 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 boom. He's like playing like some like kind of polka, you know, sort of march with his uh, sousaphone. And I was watching him in the park and this girl just comes over, this girl that I'd been kind of I, uh, going on dates with, even though I didn't realize it, sits down on the park bench next to me. And I just like looked at her and they just looked at the Seuss phone player and he just played for a little bit. And they just fucking busted. And I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> 
I forgot we were in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, whoa! Yeah. Yes. Because... Oh, he has a wet dream. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You forget that he was in a dream because it's like a boring reality. <laughs> It's like a boring thing to happen. Like, like, oh, he was on a date. It seems really oh, boring, but so your dream funny. was the sousaphone, which I know I knew about the sousaphone. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that uh, that concludes our talk about Erwan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was our segment. First nut. <laughs> Every guest from here on out has to talk about their first nut. <laughs> Uh, look, it's time for a segment. It's time for Slop Quiz, We're in Doe World Edition. And as we're doing this, uh, Dan, you were very kind. You brought us a sweet treat to munch on. Uh, though, tell, tell us about what we're, what we're going to have here. We got some Choco Lots. Is that yeah, correct? these are from Valerie Confections. Wow. Uh, which there's a handful of these in LA, including one right next to where my landlord's office is. I wow. I was dropping off the rent. And I was like, this might be a little treat since you guys are buying us lunch. I will say, uh, uh, now that I'm looking at them, these are not really probably good. Oh, and they're all messy. Sorry. That's but all right. to eat on mic because okay. they're very like chewy, caramelly things. Got it. Um, they look, they, they look great. Flavors that they gave me a free sample of like a sesame caramel one, which wow. is like the long wow. one. Uh, if you see that, that I got three. So you, there's one for each of y'all. This one's kind of an oblong that I'm holding, kind that of a half a lips. Egg one she threw in for Easter. She was like, I'll throw egg, an egg one fun. for you for free. I got this one. It looks salted. That, I think that. Oh, that might be either the caramel or the the um Ooh. the sesame one I was talking about. Ooh, okay, oh, let's see here. I um, think yeah, give it a shot. Uh, while we're doing this, here's how this quiz is going to work. It's the same. The three of you must determine where in the world the following foods originate. This was compiled by our associate producer Emilio Marino. Mm. All right, first up, I got the sesame one here. Looks good. First Sorry. up, where in the world did fries originate? Your options are A, France, B, Belgium, and C, United States. Mitch. Yeah. Belgium. I forgot to copy paste the answers. Hold on. <laughs> that sesame one is wild. What do you think? I like it. Well, I took a bite of it, but do you want to try no, it? No, I'm good. I like this one. It's fucking good. I really liked it. I might go back for more at some point because it, it, it was really good. I'm surprised by it because I... Sorry, I'm very, you're right. I'm very chewy. <laughs> um... Where's that fucking email? I am like, I don't, I've never had this combo, I don't think. It's fucking great. Yeah, it is. It's like sesame seed. Toasted sesame seeds. Mm, yeah. There's one of these in Grand Central Market, the Valerie. There's one in Echo Park. And at least that one in Echo Park was like a big staple of mine for a while because they have a soft scrambled eggs there. Mm. That is so good. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, what did you guess, Mitch? Belgium. Mitch, you are correct. Belgium is the answer. I could told you that I was right. Yeah. Ne next up, where in the world did peanut butter originate? A Canada, B England, C United States. I feel Damn. like that's us, United States. I just gleeked. Oh my god! Thing fucking exploded all over me. It was good though. Um, not United States. What was the first two? A Canada, B England. I was going to say Canada, but then I looked over Lippert, and I saw the correct. answer. No, oh, you great. Got it. You got it. <laughs> I trust you, honor system. All right, next up pasta. Mm. A, Italy, B, China, C, France. Uh, Mitch. Yes, Mitch. Wait, uh, China. You are correct. You got two. How did you know that? Because I think just the, the fact of like noodles, you know what I mean? Like, sure. Uh, right. And it's older. And it's older. It's, it's old as hell. Old. All right, next one. Number four is fudge brownies. Your options are A, mm. New Orleans, the Bayou, B, Philadelphia, or C, Chicago. Dan, Philadelphia? Philadelphia. Not Philadelphia. Right. Ooh. New Orleans. Not New Orleans. Yes. Not the Bayou? Well, no, I'm going to go with the other answer that I don't remember. <laughs> Mitch, it's Chicago. I'll give it to you. <laughs> you will? Yeah. All right, Chicago. All right, next Fudge up. Brownies, that makes sense. That seems like a Chicago. I can't thing. believe how much caramel I have all over my yeah, hands. Really how would you get it up your arm? I don't, oh, I just, wow, that one's a leaky one. Oh, I see how. Because you, you ate it by putting three of your fingers in your mouth. So <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to do it. Mouth. Sometimes you got to freaking put the three fingers. <laughs> I didn't mean to do this to you. Dude. No, this is not your fault. It was good. It was good as hell. Hey, why you just got a piece of chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> fucking fist in your mouth. <laughs> Where in the world is Kool-Aid from? Mm. A, Hastings, Nebraska. B, Indianapolis, Indiana. C, Jonestown, Guyana. 
Ooh, the last one makes me want to say it. Like I want, yeah. I want it to be. Hmm. I'll say, I'll, I'll say it. I will. I, I'll be bold enough to say Jonestown, Guyana. No, that's a reference to the Jonestown How mass, cult, the massacre. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm going to say the next one, Nebraska. You are correct, Ryan. <laughs> Love it. I'm the guy that gets out of the hundred dollar question of who wants to be a billionaire. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna say it. <laughs> All right, three left. Still anyone's game. Mitch has three. Uh, Rosenberg has two. Uh, next up, popsicles. A Boston, C Lansing, Michigan, B Lansing, Michigan, and C Oakland. Mitch, go ahead, Mitch. Uh, Michigan, not Lansing, Michigan. Oh fuck! I'd be so mad if it's Boston. <laughs> uh, uh, me, uh, Oakland. Yes, you are correct. Not it up at three apiece. Got to be hot. They got to make it when it's hot. Got to be somewhere hot. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Fucking good point. Next up. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Bloody Mary. Uh. <laughs> Don't say it too much. <laughs> not near a mirror. It's fine. One of the answers the nether realm. <laughs> a, London. B, Los Angeles. C, New York City. Ooh. I'll say A, London. Yeah. That's a good answer. Not London. Oh. Really? They're both wrong because they said good answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, Los Angeles. No, it's not Los Angeles. New York. I was going to say New York City. Mitch, you, you're correct. It's New, New York, York City. City. <laughs> All right, you've got four. Rosenberg Pace, and Hyatt. salsa. What is that? What it was? Pace, Pace, Pace Picante. Pace Picante. We yeah, should have known rope. from that. Both tomato based and, and <laughs> makes sense. Get a rope. Remember that? That was the end of it? Yeah. Oh, they're going to hang him? They're going to hang him. Oh, my God. Wrong salsa. <laughs> Tie him up and fuck him. Apparently. Well, I think they eventually... <laughs> apparently? What do you mean? Apparently? <laughs> all right, let's tie him up and fuck him. Wait, what? <laughs> let's do it all, oh, just on. in case. Let's get it all. <laughs> no more improv. No more improv. No I'm more sad. improv from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, finally. Uh, a, Almas Caviar. This is the Guinness World Record holder for the most expensive caviar on the planet. can cost up to $1,000 per ounce. The options are A, Romania, B, Iran, or C, Mitch's house. <laughs> <laughs> See, how's it made? Right. How's it, how's it made? <laughs> think back. When I first jacked off, did I see any of that caviar in my car? <laughs> what was the? It was Iran and what else? Romania. Romania. I have my answer, but I'm gonna. I'm, I, I'm gonna. I. I want this to be a close game. Okay. This, maybe this should be worth more than one point. All right. Well, this will just decide it. What the fuck. Well, right. if it's not, if it's worth more than one point, it's going to decide it. I have an answer to that. I have an inkling, but not an answer. My answer is Romania. Mitch, I'm sorry. You're <clears throat> wrong. Wow. Fuck. God, I, you could still okay, get okay. this wrong. Is it Mitch's house? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Mitch's house. <laughs> Dan. Wow. Lippert's going to win. <laughs> I'm going to have to try Mitch's house one more time. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Mitch's house. Casey, you want to guess? Uh, I forgot what the... Uh... <laughs> uh, Iran is the other option. Ooh. I'm going to go with Iran. Casey takes it. Congratulations. Wow. Congrats, you have Casey. won. We're wow. in the world. Uh, just like a restaurant, you value your feedback. <laughs> Let's open up the feed bag. And hey, here's today's question. It's from Jamie from Portland. I'm currently doing my internship to be a school psychologist, and I'm having a hard time bringing my lunch. All this bowl talk from our Tournament of Champions, Munch Madness Bowl, because they need something fast, moderately healthy, and can be transported to my schools. All this bowl talk has inspired me, rather. However, I'm completely overwhelmed with conceptualizing what elements I need. Grain, protein, etc. How would you break down the elements of a lunch bowl? A basic outline, if you will, a guide to make sure all the nutritional bases are covered. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jamie. Wow. We talked about bulls a lot in the month of March, Mitch. Mm. Uh, this is a great question because I like I, as much as I, I I eat bulls for sustenance, I don't make I don't take bulls to go all that often. 
Is that ever a move uh, either of you will do? Like, will you, you make like a lunch bowl and like take it with you? My More like, of a home food for me. My leftovers usually end up kind of turning into bowls. Like, oh, sure. Yeah. I do like the Hello Fresh thing where you cook one meal and then it has mm. like a leftover one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'll usually put that into a little t- uh, into a to go like separate, but then I'll just mix it all together when I eat it. So it kind of ends up like a bowl. That's a good move, actually. I leftovers bowl. Move. I like that a lot. Yeah. I think that. Wow. I think that you need to have. I I think that it it needs more than just lettuce. I don't because that then you're a salad. Then you're making a salad, yeah. So I think it needs some sort of grain. For me, I think it's a protein, grain, and green. I think those are the big three for a bowl. Yeah, and maybe a topping and a sauce. Yeah, a topping. Yeah, sauce. like your flavors yeah. after that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's that's a. I think I think yes, protein, uh, green, grain, topping. That's that is. Mm-hmm. I think those you got a bowl if you got those four ingredients. So if you've got like let's say okay we got I get some I get some quinoa I've got some uh, you know I got some some spinach some raw spinach mm-hmm. uh, and I've got like some you know chunks of tuna I'm gonna throw that onto a like I'm gonna make, like start a bowl with that and then I've also got some I don't know I've got some slivered almonds I'll throw on there and then maybe like some green goddess dressing then you're starting yeah. to get somewhere you got it some skin good. glaze a little skin glaze yeah <laughs> I I think that there's got to be in a bowl. One item that you're definitely excited about. Oh, that's a great call. Because to me, the bowl is almost heartbreaking. Yeah. Mm Because it's like, uh, I'm doing this for my health and for speed. So for me, it's got to be like the meat's got to be an exciting, like a pastor or a a well-seasoned chicken or something like that. Mm -hmm. That I can kind of like, every bite has the thing that's like, hell yeah. And then the rest is like, yeah, this is good for me. I, but I think that's a great call. I, I also, though, like I could have like some Parmesan crisps or like just like a dressing. I really like a chip, like a Chipotle ranch. And that could do that. Yeah. That yeah. Role. But I like that idea yeah. of like one component you're excited about. It's a great role. I think you can pick like a um, I don't know what you would call it, but like an area like you could make a Greek bowl or a Mexican bowl or. a mm. And so like that's a good way for me to conceptualize it because the sauce is also important to me. Like I like like a feta like a feta sauce or something, sure. but I don't love just feta cheese plain. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I, I like a good Greek bowl though. You're, that's the, a Greek bowl is right up my mm-hmm. alley. That's kind of. Can I say a thing you can do, and I think you could just have in your uh, in your fridge, and anytime you're making a bowl, you can throw one of these on there. Hard boiled egg. Just yeah, have some hard, good. just hard boil mm-hmm. some eggs in a batch. Take one out, crack, crack it open, cut it in half, or, or slice it up, toss it on there. You got a little mm-hmm. extra protein. Mm-hmm. That'll work with pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. I, agree. I like that. It's yeah. a good one. I like that. Oh. I, I also think it. something that's good with the bowl is keeping your wet ingredients and dry ingredients separate sure. until you want to eat it. So you can have like a little dressing yeah. thing on the side or even like my tomatoes or black beans I'll keep separate because they don't make everything else weird, you know? I agree with that. Also, another thing, this is important too. It's got to be in some sort of container that is bowl-like. If you right, don't pull yeah. this shit. <laughs> Where you put it on a plate. No, don't put it on a plate. It's not it's mm-hmm. not a bowl. It's gotta be in and out. Look, I'll say that like the contain one of those fucking Ziploc or whatever those container, the hefty containers, those count. Yeah, those that's are a fine. bowl. That's a bowl yeah. to you, a hefty container. Uh, uh, yes, that's a that's what a bowl. exactly are you imagining that somebody has put a bowl on a plate to go and put saran wrap over it? That's a possibility. I think yeah. that, that could be it. Uh tin foil over a plate. Yeah. I just saying it, you can't make a if it's a bowl's a, gotta be in a in something that's got depth. Yes. Yeah. It needs depth. And also like not, a, ta- not like a tall plate. If we're talking about like, a fucking tall plate, tall plate. Yeah, I ain't do one of these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are, this kind of oh. works. I think that 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 works. A container works. is okay. Container is okay. If you go to one of Mitch's bowl parties with a tall plate, get ready to get fucking roasted. <laughs> get the rope. <laughs> you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830-GOTO. That's 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double or Weekly Bonus episode, join the Golden or Platinum Play Club at patreon.com slash Doughboys. Boys, Dan Lippert, Ryan Rosenberg. Such a treat to have you what here. Thank you so much Thank for you. reviewing Thanks Erewhon. For uh, the podcast is Man Dog Pod. It's so fun. It's so funny. Hilarious. People should check it out. Uh, give it a listen. Tell us about the show. Anything else you want to plug? Uh, Man Dog is an improv and conversation podcast. You can find it for free anywhere you get podcasts. And then we have a Patreon where we have video of the episodes. But yeah, we have guests on to do improv and, the, and we chat in between. We've done a ton of improv at UCB and other sketch and improv places, so that's kind of what we kept doing with our podcast. And then BigGrandeWebsite.com is our group with John Mackey and Drew Tarver, and we we sell a la carte podcasts, including one that should be out by the time this comes out, called Exit 43. It's 20 
uh, improvised like 20 minute ish long mono scenes in different locations at the same uh, exit route off of a whatever freeway that's hilarious right. dudes and those guys are hilarious as well and a great setup that's a great the, the system you got there is great yeah, we've great talked setup. about it before yeah it's great you. uh and by the way we are going to be guesting on an episode of man dog pod that we're recording the same day as we're recording this episode of dough boys not sure what will come out first but look if you never listen to the pod don't listen to that one don't first. listen to that one we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, jumping Nick on and i are gonna suck it up <laughs> yeah. pretty bad that one's gonna be a hit for us <laughs> 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 Who are those two fat guys arguing about sharing? <laughs> I think it's Dan That's and Ryan. Ryan. Still. <laughs> 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 That'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Don't excite for this movie by Mike Mitchell. I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. Think you can ad read with the big boys, meaning the Doughboys? Then shoot your shot to become Doughboys Ad Chad. We're putting out a search for the fan who's the cream of the crop at cold reading commercial copy. The finalists will be revealed on a June episode of Doughboys Double, and the winner will receive a one-month paid gig as our promo reader. Wow. Info on how to submit and the test copy is on our social media. We want you to be our ad chab. Uh, I mean ad chad. Emma, can you fix that in the edit? Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast.